Hello yes, and welcome to the film tirade. I'm your host, Popcorn Philosophy, and with me are my two co-hosts. Introduce yourself, sir. Hi, I'm Popcorn Philosophy. Hi, I uh, shit my pants. Hello, I shit your pants. Uh, please introduce yourself, for everybody that doesn't know you. Um, I shit my. Okay, um, I'm Popcorn Philosophy, the real one. Don't trust the other two. You can see because we're sussy bakas. Th- yeah. They are sussy bakas. We are sussy bakas, kid. Very handsome, and I'm taller than them, probably. As you can see from the mute podcast YouTube screen, he is very handsome. Yes. <laughs> yes. We look, have no pictures, but don't worry. <laughs> no pictures, just timestamps. He's one of the timestamps. Yes, I'm the 69 timestamp. Yep. Welcome. But I wonder if wait, no, 69 isn't an actual number on seconds. Anyways. <laughs> Hello, welcome, Popcorn Philosophy. What took you so long to uh, come back, sir? Do we really, you know, um, have a fight with you? you know, like, episode four. No, just been grinding, getting money, getting. There's too many followers for us now. It's his yeah, NFTs. So he's selling guys. his. He's charity. selling his PP NFTs. Yeah, charity for you guys. Yeah, invest in PP NFT. Yes, I totally know what that is now. <laughs> uh, only people that stay till the end know what that what we're talking about. But yeah, hello PP, welcome back. And today's episode is going to be a very horror themed episode. As you guys know, we do monthly episodes now. But so this will probably be by like at the end of the month. What do you guys think? Should I upload this like October twentieth or some crap like that? That weekend, Halloween weekend. So should that, post right? it next year. I should post yes, it next, next year. October twenty twenty two. Yes. And then when I become homeless in a week's time, I can look back at this tired episode and we can predict where we were a year ago. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Yeah, amazing time capsule. Uh, but yeah, uh, since it's a spooky month, and since this episode will come out at a spooky time, I thought it'd be amazing if we could just talk about a few Halloween movies. What do you guys say? That sounds like a great sounds idea, Sounds right? beast to me. No. <laughs> well, that's okay then, because you could talk about Venom too. Let there be carnage, your favorite Kino. monster. Kino. Three out of five from PP, which means it's a five out of five from normal people. Yeah, no. I'm not. I'm not that critical. What do you, mean? you are. You're like the Anthony Fantano of film review pages on Letterbox. I will admit, I do look up to him a lot, and it's kind of embarrassing. Yeah, but... you pinchous piece of shit. Yeah, <laughs> boo. Boo. <laughs> Venom is pretty good, though. Venom is, is? pretty good. Like yes, it. I know it's pretty good. You don't have to tell me. I saw. I'm seeing it again tomorrow. Don't I... worry. I'm telling you, it's pretty good now. I'm telling you, it's pretty good. Okay, thank you. Now you I can, can actually. Like now, yeah, so I can like good. it now. Before yeah. I had to just hit watch. Now I can actually give it a proper rating. I, yeah, I can exactly. screen record this part and send it to everyone so they also know to like Venom 2 now. <laughs> Although, Jason, your your uh, review was really good. I read it. I liked it. Oh, Thank no. you. Yes, I, I wrote I wrote my Venom 2 review just to just because I'm going to send it to my um, my school's uh, like cinema journal like review thing. So I made sure to write yeah. like a whole ass thing just so it sound good. It, it did sound good. good. I liked it. Thank yeah, you very much. It. I'm glad you didn't spoil a lot because I it comes out October fifteenth for me as everybody knows. Yeah, because is... they want to give a space for James Bond. Nobody cares about James Flop. PP, do you care about James Bond? <laughs> uh, not really, but I know yeah. a lot of people like at my school that do, which is sort of surprising. But I was everybody like in your school a fifty year old dad? <laughs> um, no, they're like nineteen year old freshmen, sophomores. I'm pretty Most sure they the said other. that James Bond's box office projections right now are only like around like 55 million for the weekend, oh, which is wow. kind of sad. Pretty, I mean, only earned yeah. 6.3 million in previews. Venom 2 earned like what, like almost 12, 12 point something. Like Although, it's also like James Bond, though, like it was like delayed like like 255 year? times. Yeah. yeah. They also lost so, like, money. I mean, yeah. The amount of time, the amount of money they've spent some money. Yeah. is so bad. Yeah. They've lost like six hundred, and they even tried selling it to Amazon. That was back when we were the Gorilla Podcast. Yeah, the, the good old days. <laughs> yeah, wow. We did the Eli Roth episode. That's when they were trying to sell it to Amazon and Apple. Almost a oh, year ago. Yeah, that's how <laughs> long ago it was, man. It was almost a year ago that James Bond was doing that, and they've lost a lot of money through shit like that. And it's like it's also like they they've had to show like every single action sequence in the trailer by this point because they've released like what seven trailers and each one yep. has to show like a little bit something new. So I'm pretty sure we've yeah. seen everything we need in those like seven trailers. And, and like, do you think like for like a year that was just sitting on someone's desktop like collecting dust? Like, mm-hmm. yeah, that's just uh, that sucks, man. Yeah. Somebody could just hit delete and we would have had to never seen it. Just like Facebook. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. Oh, good. Yeah, I, I don't know. Uh, people love this James Bond movie. It's getting good ratings and shit, but 
I'm not really into James Bond that much. And a James Bond movie getting good reviews is, I mean, especially recently, yeah. is not that hard. As long as it has an, a few big action sequences, Daniel Craig does his, you know, yeah. his little role. He's it's going to get... Oh, yeah, he's, he's already done for the yeah. day. He's good. Every James Bond movie is very formulaic as well. You take old man Daniel Craig, everybody thinks he's sexy. He wants to leave and get out of his job. Then hot girl comes. He fights for girl. She dies or she becomes badass and a uh, bad guy dies or like flies away on a helicopter at the end. <laughs> and that's every James Bond movie. I think the last one I watched was Skyfall. Oh, damn, really? So, yeah, I, think I didn't I watch Spectre yeah, or whatever the other one was, if there was one. I don't Quantum of Solace. Uh, that was before I think Skyfall. I watched that one. I think yeah. I watched that one. Yeah, there was only Spectre and then this one. And the only reason you think there was one after Spectre is because this movie is taking the, taking the piss to come out because of COVID and shit. Oh, that's true, yeah. <laughs> yeah. It was, it was meant to come out in 2019 or 2020? Something like that, right? I think Jason? 2019, right? Yeah, 2019. It got delayed. Also. But yeah, then it got delayed. I think it got delayed already beforehand. And then it got delayed again because of COVID. So it got like... It just yeah, kept getting I remember, pushed. I remember it had like a November... Didn't it have like November 2020 yeah. at one point? It it was April, November, and some other dates. Damn, man, they really were waiting to push that one out. That's yeah, the yeah, yeah. The, yeah. And Rami that. Malek is the the villain, so scary. Yeah. Did uh, did Tenant make a lot of money when it came out? I don't know. Nope. Flop. No? Yeah, flop. Okay, flop. I okay, think it made like a little bit. I think it made like maybe like a hundred million more than its budget, which you know for like any other movie wouldn't be horrendous, but for a two hundred million dollar blockbuster, it's kind of a flop. Yeah, okay. on the I remember days, Nolan was like, "This is gonna, I'm gonna save cinema. It's gonna be yeah. so good." And then it flopped. He really, yeah, he hyped that shit up and kind of yeah. like, did not. and it sucked. The movie was mid. Yeah. That was the problem. I think yeah. the only movie that made good money during prime COVID was Crudes. Yeah, Crudes. <laughs> yeah, that was released internationally for some reason, and it's still. And the thing is, Crudes has this weird legal loophole where they're literally showing it in theaters every single month. Everybody loves Cruise. Some, yeah, it, was, it was released in some places internationally. It was released in America during the release date. And then it's released in some other places internationally. And in England, it's been out for like two years in cinema. Some crap. We love Crudes. Yeah. Crudes is making a shitload of money. It's, it's getting Nicholas back. Forget Pig. Yes. Forget we don't need Pig. Time. We got the yeah. Crudes a New we Age. We got Crudes. The Crudes a New Age. And we got that TV show coming out as well. Consuming. <laughs> yeah, Crudes merch. That's how good Crudes did. It got its own spin-off TV show. We want more Crudes. Crudes 3, make it happen. Yeah. Speaking of Nolan, didn't you have some news to talk about with him? Uh, I did, yeah. So I think, I believe it's today. It's been uh, officially finalized that Cillian Murphy will be playing in the new Nolan film. He will be the lead. Yeah. And Sounds good to me, I guess. Yeah. He's going to be I'll... Oppenheimer. Oppenheimer. Yeah, although... I'm still pretty worried about how this whole film is gonna play out. But, oh yeah, because uh, it's a British. It's white gonna dude. be. It's, it's gonna be American bomb. propaganda yeah. for the bomb. Yeah, it will be. Yeah, because yeah, because the the other film that focused or well, they fo- focused on Paul Tibbetts, the pilot of the plane that dropped the bomb. It was called Above and Beyond. Yeah. Um, and it's one of the worst films I've ever seen. It's one of the <laughs> only films that genuinely because it's like so un- unapologetically just like propaganda american yeah uh, so yeah i'm curious to see how no one and i don't think no one is known for his subtlety or his like character oh, no. dimension so yeah we'll see i guess <laughs> i'm interested Plus, to see if he's gonna like actually ask them if he can like drop a bomb or something like that be like oh i gotta film it for the authenticity yeah, he probably will he'll drop a tiny bomb in an ocean and then cgi the rest <laughs> uh knowing him he's such a maniac <laughs> he is yeah oh he's so quirky yeah, but yeah. The, knowing Nolan, there'll be a massive twist where it turns out the atomic bomb was actually Cillian Murphy in a cannonball, and uh, and this whole world was a dream world, and everything was made up. And then, and then John David Washington's gonna reverse time and make the bomb never happen, and then the world's <laughs> gonna be saved. Yeah, and then Robert Pison comes out and says there was no tenant needed this time. <laughs> <laughs> and then, and then Kanye West, the plan plays as Travis Scott is singing backup cover vocals <laughs> from his song The Plan as well. <laughs> uh, the Christopher Nolan universe we're making it this time, baby. Nolan's always been a weird director uh, for me, in my opinion, though, because he's kind of like M. Night Shyamalan, but like 
he's got more critically acclaimed movies, so people see him kind of differently. But it's really f- funny seeing how much he sugarcoats his or co- cookie cuts his like only gimmick, you know, the twist that he does. Yeah, I feel like if I rewatched a lot of his movies, I'd probably hate them a lot more. Yeah, same, same. What about like, you? I mean, I'm, I'm never rewatching the Prestige or Memento. We'll never have oh, the time to mentally never, handle either of those. Mid never as hell. rewatch him. Never rewatch him because. Did you like those movies when you first watched them? Memento, I I kind of liked the first time. The Prestige, I really didn't care for the first time. But even as I've been thinking about the Prestige, I've hated. Yeah, We've talked about how much we yeah. we haven't we don't like that movie. Yeah, we have uh, as friends because like uh, uh, the thing with uh, PP. Uh, let me know if you agree with me. I think we've talked about it in group chat before as well. But if you rewatch an older movie with a twist, the twist just gets more stupid, and you point out plot holes. I'm pretty yeah. sure like Memento's yeah. movie like doesn't even work like in oh, yeah, forward motion or something like that. Like yeah. the, how the hell are you going to write a story and then not have it work? I think one of our friends said, yo, they should make Memento in chronological order. And I'm like, that doesn't work at all because it was just like, <laughs> a boring movie where a guy walks and someone dies. <laughs> yeah, like that's the thing with, with Memento. It's like I, I still kind of like the movie. Oh, it's a good movie. Just watch it once or twice. It's completely yeah. dependent on its structure because without its structure, it's a really bland movie honestly yeah i think memento is an impressive movie because of the time it came out and the budget and the fact that it was chris's what second movie yeah, yeah right i think it was after yeah. following it was after yeah. following it's very impressive because it, it it feels kind of nostalgic it's got that 2000s uh student kind of hint to it even though it's not a student film and uh again you know you watch it one time and it's very impressive but I cannot rewatch Christopher Nolan movies due to the fact that his big twist is just made for one viewing and one viewing only. I think that's the case though with a lot of films with twists, though. Oh yeah, definitely. I don't really think they're they're often made for like multiple viewings. Although I mean, since we just mentioned Shyamalan, I mean, The Sixth Sense is one of those movies you could keep watching to pick up on a little bit more details yeah. of like like noticing that's the big point. twist. That's yeah. one of the ones that I can think of. But I yeah, I definitely get what you mean. I I think a lot of twist movies it's like oh that was cool but then once you know the twist like maybe you could watch it one more time to see but then after a while it's like eh, i don't really have any interest because the first hour and 45 minutes mean nothing for the last five minutes yeah yeah, yeah. split is cool because it's it's not even a twist movie the twist just happens at the end yeah like, the twist even, is just yeah. more of like a Connection. holy holy crap lois moment yeah it's yeah. not even a twist so that works six cents works besides that those are the only two blockbuster actors that do like massive twists Oh, Denny doesn't even do twists, but his style can feel like Nolan to a mainstream audience. I feel like, yeah, yeah, a lot of those directors that if they do twists, it's like it's it's, it's meant for a massive mainstream audience, and therefore it's only meant for one viewing. If you watch a more non-linear director or something, then uh, then th- those people's twists and you know style kind of works better in rewatches and shit. And the twists are always like for big blockbuster directors are always just really safe. Like I don't yeah. know. You're never Very really gonna. Character. It's never really gonna be like a like a daring twist that's gonna be like, holy crap! I never saw that coming. Like, yeah, yeah like there's not gonna be an old boy that comes out. <laughs> yeah, it's exactly. made by Spike Lee. Uh, of course, yes. Kino. Big Spike Lee, NBA 2K16. Although, man. I will say, yes. I don't know if you'd count this film as like having like a major major twist, but Get Out, I think is. Really- yeah. Oh yeah, I've yeah. seen that movie like a thousand like, times. Yeah. I've seen it really, I think three times maybe, but yeah, that one I think has some pretty good small twist that like rewatching it works pretty well yeah i'm shocked by how well get out like did you know because the blumhouse picture it's peel's first movie and like it's it, it's just critically and box office wise did it so well for itself it's really I, I really wish the film community was like more of a thing whenever whenever that movie was like yeah. first announced yeah. because everybody'd be like jordan peel directing horror what an idiot and then he'd come <laughs> out and make the best thing ever <laughs> I remember I saw the trailer for it and I thought it looked like garbage. I'm not gonna lie. It looked so you thought Keegan like... Michael Key was gonna be better. Uh, okay. I just thought it looked really bland. But yeah, it was much, much better. Yeah, bro, I thought it was gonna be like Keanu. You guys seen Keanu? <laughs> yeah, Keanu. <laughs> yeah, Keanu. <laughs> I thought it was gonna be like Keanu. I thought it was expect like Key to pop out of the trailer and be like, you know, just the twist is I don't know. He, he, he hits him or some shit. <laughs> You know, I didn't know that Jordan Peele was married to Chelsea Peretti until like yeah, three days ago. Yeah, I was really? like, what the hell? They're... Yeah, like yeah, I, yeah, I would have yeah, never yeah. seen them together, but they've been married for like five years. They have, yeah. Um, it's weird. It's like PTA and Maya Rudolph, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, that's another one that's like, I would I would have just I never seen that. those I two people that, together. That. But I love those. Yeah. Yeah. Have her in licorice pizza. Was it the Punch Drunk Club episode we did like way, way back? That yeah, that was the one where I found out. And I had no um, you were like, what? Because you thought I was joking? Yeah. 
It's the only other time I've seen you like that is uh when I told you David Spade is a loser. Yeah, that was that was the biggest surprise twist ever. Because I joked about Rob Schneider being in it. And then you said David Spade. I was like, oh yeah, good joke. And then he was in the movie. Because <laughs> cause when Jason thinks you're like you're saying some bullshit and you're repeating the same bullshit, he says it in a very concerned father voice, like he doesn't care and he's moving on. But then when he finds out it's actually real, he gets proper shock. It's hilarious. I was I was amazed. Yeah, just like I was when I went to get out and it wasn't Keanu. Yeah, where the hell was Keegan Michael Key? Yeah, playing with fire <laughs> too. Watch soon. He was too busy doing trolls, isn't he? In trolls, he's in a lot of shit movies. Keegan Michael Key. Yes, yeah, so as as our TikTok fame has proven, Keegan Michael oh, yeah. Key is in a lot of movies. PP, we did a Keegan Michael Key. We did the clip and we sent it on TikTok and it got it got like one point one k views or some shit. Oh wow! Yeah. I know that's that's that's, for, that's pretty good for us just randomly shitting on Keegan Michael Key. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I think this could be a clip actually. This is a good little clip bit. Part, isn't it? Sequel, Don't... sequel yeah. to the first one. Yeah, thank you TikTok. We love watch you. Hotel Come Transylvania on. Four in theaters. Soon. Sorry, Keegan Michael Key. We, yes. we love the man. Yeah, but yeah, that's that's kind of funny. We were talking about horror movies. We went on a little tangent about Nolan and uh, twists, but I think it counts. We talked about Sixth Sense. We talked about non-linear directors. We talked about Get Out, and we also talked about the greatest horror movie of all time, Hotel Transylvania Four. Yes, everybody, go watch yeah. it. Which which gets me thinking. Uh, what are your lot's favorite horror movies? PP, you go first because I know Jason has talked about horror a lot. And he, we'll let Jason like kind of go on a tangent about American Western horror. So, PP, yeah, what, what, shut your the... mouth, Jason. Yeah, shut your mouth. Jason. No, but one Stop second, talking. you big shot celebrity, <laughs> you. So uh... yeah, zip it. <laughs> yeah, his niche Instagram icon, I'm Jason Kelly. I'm crying. So uh, yeah, PP, uh, what's your favorite horror movie? What What is some of your favorite horror like movies? Just Just talk about, express yourself, sir. Yeah. Yeah, so um, my first one, probably the one I talk about a lot, or people seem to talk about a lot, is House. Mm-hmm. I still love that film. I don't know if you count it as a horror because it's so it ridiculous. House of the Rising Sun yeah. by the Animals. Yes, I yeah. agree. <laughs> Close. No, House, the American um, movie, which actually exists. Look it up. House American. House, the TV show with Hugh Laurie. Oh yeah, yes. House, <laughs> House, the place that I'm living in right now. Proceed. House, the the place that Karen took the kids. <laughs> Anyways, um, so House is really good. Possession is really really good. Well, I think I may go see that in theaters soon. Poop session, poop session, yes, yeah, poop session. Yeah. Um, I feel like I should have probably looked at my list more. Audition by yeah. I think it's. I have to I see that Takashi Mike. Takashi Mike, Takashi yeah, Mike. the guy that made the Yakuza movie. Yakuza, Yakuza. I actually wanted to watch a Takashi Mike film. I can't remember what the name of it was, but Watch it was on. It was, wait, let me, I'm going to go see it. It came out like a few years ago. Oh, First Love, it's called. Oh, it's on Hulu. Oh, First Love was good. Yeah, I, yeah. I haven't seen it, but he has like... I know it's on Amazon Prime, I'm lying. I think he has like a hundred movies or something. He has yeah, like a yeah. shit ton of movies. He made like a shitload in 2000s after Yakuza. <laughs> it's insane. Like, yeah, people like on Letterboxd would be like, oh, Takashi filmography ranked. And it's like, there's like <laughs> 60 films. I'm like, what the fuck are you doing? Like, how are you going to do a Take a look at yourself in the mirror right now. Yeah. Anything for Takashi, Mike? Then again, we're saying this, but we're, we're the man who does a Nicolas Cage ranking thing. Yeah, I have a Nicolas Cage ranking. So I can't, I can't judge. Nicolas Cage can actually act. <gasps> he's an actual actor? Oh, he's just playing wacky guy, Ghost Rider, you funny little boy. <laughs> Nicolas Cage won an Oscar? What? No. What? Was that crazy, man? <laughs> uh, but yeah, proceed, sir. PP of House. Uh, and yes. others. Oh, one that I saw recently, that was, oh, recently ish, was Cure. Mm-hmm. By, What's that about? Yeah, I think it's by Kyo, another Kurosawa from Japan, Kyoshi Kurosawa, I think that's how you pronounce him. It's about like a a cure for wellness. <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> so I saw someone say on the internet that movie is like one of the best horror films. Because <laughs> whenever I was typing in cure, that was I just saw that I was like, all right, I have to mention a cure for wellness just because I saw. It. Yes, yes. What is he? Akira Kurosawa's nephew or son? I don't think they're related whatsoever. Wow, that's interesting. He well, he directed uh, a cure for wellness starring yes. Dan Dehan. <laughs> <laughs> Quirky. No, he didn't. Oh well, proceed, sir. <laughs> um, but yeah, it's a lot like Seven, kind of like um, it's sort of like a like a cop kind of crime thriller, I guess you could call it. But it's 
like people start killing people more seriously. It's so kind of f- f- formulaic in that regard, but it's really, really well done, really eerie, mm-hmm. like kind of really cool, different kind of horror, which I really like. We've talked a lot of my show. favorite horror films are like suspense more than horror. I think I agree. I like suspense and dramatic movies more than I do like horror horror movies. You know. Yeah, just like a cure for wellness. I think that one is a really good suspense. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. And, and don't forget uh, Hotel Transylvania 3, of course. Yes, Hotel Transylvania 3. Yeah. Uh, vacation. That reminds me. Yeah. When I was in sixth grade, I won a raffle for yeah. um, to watch a movie with <laughs> a the librarian. <laughs> yeah, it was weird. Like, <laughs> you get to watch a movie with the librarian. Here you go. <laughs> I could bring two friends, and I could just sit there. And we had to watch the movie with the librarian, and I played Hotel Transylvania, <laughs> and we just watched it, ate candy in silence. There was no laughing. I just turned the lights on, and we're like, "Okay, thank you." And we left. And, it was that, and that's that's what experience. started popcorn philosophy. Without that, <laughs> you know, Hotel Transylvania with the librarian, this film, or this account would never be made. Yeah, it was a really transformative experience for me. So let me explain this. Okay, so let me let me get this straight. So uh, you won a raffle, so you won something from your school to watch yeah. a movie with your library. <laughs> That's so random. Honestly, <laughs> I think he just wanted to watch a movie. Yeah, he was kind of <laughs> Yeah, he was probably raffle. bored as hell and just wanted to get out of his job. <laughs> he probably got paid was... extra for this. Yeah. So, yeah. You, so you won a raffle, or he won a raffle to watch a movie with you, Popcorn Philosophy. <laughs> I won a raffle. <laughs> <laughs> you, you won the prize. <laughs> you were the prize for that librarian so he won the raffle to watch a movie with you and you got to bring two friends with you so you and your two friends and the librarian all bought on Hotel Transylvania and you watched it dead silent you guys didn't even yeah. think it was funny at all that's cringe what the and you know what's sad too is I could have picked any movie that was PG or G and I picked <laughs> Hotel Transylvania what year was this <laughs> um 2020, no, I'm kidding. <laughs> 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 I was in 6th grade, so like 20, I don't know, fucking know, like, um, that sounds right. I was 2007, 7, uh, yeah, I think 2011, yeah, 2011, yeah, 2011 cause I was in 2013, uh, 2014, right, for me. Yeah, whatever. I think the movie had just come came out, or it just came out like on DVD. Oh, okay, it was that like recent. Sense. There was a recent phenomenon. Yeah, that happened to me. You know, Taking recent the world movie. by storm. That happened to me with a recent movie. Jason was about the story. Um, <laughs> I I hung out with a friend and I went to a friend's house and I had very strict like grand uh, grandma and a uncle obviously. So when I came home that day, they were shouting at me. They're like, "Where have you been? Where have you been?" And I said, "I went on a school trip to watch the cruise." <laughs> <laughs> Because <laughs> when I was walking, there was a bust at the crude poster. Like, <laughs> and it was still on. So I said, uh, uh, school took us to, to cinema and then said, What were you watching? And I said, uh, <laughs> <laughs> so, Yeah, well, that happened to me as well. They like they Kino. Like, I can't control. They can't control. <laughs> Did they quiz you or like questions about the plot? Yeah, they're like, What 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 was Nicolas Cage's character's name? Uh, uh, Ugh, he, he ran the, the hook. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah that, that was hilarious so yeah and, and funnily enough i met you and your librarian there so um that was also unique on the theater yeah we were watching groups together <laughs> that yeah, was insane there was no silence dead, uh, dead silence dead silence not no sense but yeah, that's yeah, this time she won the raffle and invited me to go see Fruits with her. <laughs> <laughs> was the, did the librarian look hyped when you guys were watching Cotel Transylvania? She was just sort of sitting there eating candy with us. I mean, wait, I thought I thought you said he at first. It's she. <laughs> it's just she. Okay, yeah, never mind. Just... All right. Yeah, she was just sort of like an older lady. Um, nothing else I remember about her other than her just watching Hojo Transylvania with us. <laughs> what did you have to do to like uh what is it get into like you just like filled out a ticket or whatever for the raffle and then they yeah my school like elementary school they have like a like a like a fest not a festival like a party thing for the whole school every like once <laughs> every year and so you have to like i so i first of all i spent money for this i should probably specify <laughs> oh, so i bought tickets <laughs> and put them all put them all into the box that said watch movie with librarian <laughs> I could have I could have put it into gift baskets. There was like 
like basketball games I could have played. I could have gotten like homework passes. <laughs> I put all my money, which was I think twenty bucks. My dad gave me. But, so, <laughs> I spent twenty dollars to watch Hotel Transylvania with the librarian. <laughs> do, do, do you think the librarian thought you were playing with her? Or something? And one more thing I think it's important to add is the candy. I brought the candy. So <laughs> I just want to say that, like, she, all she did was like get the whole Wait, did you did you guys I, watch this on like a computer screen or like at like a projector? No, it was a projector. We had a projector at least. It was like a little room she had in the library with like presentations, and we just sat there on the floor, crisscross applesauce. <laughs> You know what I'm gonna say, right? <laughs> oh, I uh, you gonna... with the twenty dollars have gone to watch Hotel Transylvania at the theaters with your friends and your father <laughs> or something. It's because I wanted to watch it with the librarian. <laughs> I wonder if they like like they were like, all right, let's let's pick a ticket from the like basket or whatever, and they look at and it said popcorn philosophy, and they're like, okay, I don't like that kid, and then they put their hand back in and they take out another one, and it also says popcorn philosophy. Yeah, I mean, I put so like I don't remember the exact you know ticket you to money lot, conversion, yeah. but I put a shit ton of tickets. It was like all my tickets were in that one. <laughs> And again, I, mean, I have to reiterate that there was gift baskets I could have won. There was like homework baskets. There was this needs to be the clip for the week. Watching Hotel oh. Transylvania. With the... yeah, this could have been the IGTV video. And yeah. Like, so, so, so let me get this straight, PP. You could have had you could have had someone do your homework for you. You could have played basketball, but instead, you and only you, because let's be honest, you were the only kid to do this. Instead, put put twenty dollars <laughs> into watching a movie with your librarian and two friends. You should you should email the school and or the library or whatever, and be like, hey, do you remember whenever we uh we watched <laughs> Hotel Transylvania back in like twenty eleven? I, I don't mean to be a downer, but I'm pretty sure she's passed away from cancer. Oh, so that is, that rest in peace really to, to the All librarian. All right, you librarian. There's not really a way to, yeah, but um, I do oh, want dear. my money back. It was a pretty bad experience. I cannot lie. The viewing experience was very lackluster. Two out of ten. You you paid for it. Yeah, you paid for it. <laughs> Yo, the librarian better have gotten a great, great fucking check from that. I mean, it was during like class time, so she like got like a hour and a half break like, i mean the last I... name of the of the hotel transylvania director is tartakovsky and that's as close as tartakovsky as we're yeah. gonna get so <laughs> you you got to watch kino yeah and uh yeah the, uh, ladies and gentlemen this clip will be called this this clip will be named uh how pp got the name popcorn philosophy or how pp got into film how, how pp became, became a film account how pp <laughs> became popcorn philosophy yeah it all started with hotel transylvania <laughs> Kino. I'm the librarian. <laughs> I my two friends. It's insane. But yeah, what were we talking about? Horror movies. <laughs> we got so far <laughs> off topic. Anything, any other horror movies you want to mention? Um. Oh, yeah. oh Funny Games is the last one I'll mention. Funny Games, really, really good film. I don't like the US version. Well, I guess it's the same, but I don't like it that much. Um, but yeah, really good thriller. Um, very good subverting expectations. Watch it. Uh, the uh, the Michelle Hanukkah movie. See, si. yeah, me gusta. Jason, have you watched any Michelle Hanukkah movies? I have not. Should I? I? Think, I thought there'd be things he'd be into, right? Suspense and shit. Um, funny games. Yeah, the rest of his stuff, like, kind of serious. Yeah, they're they're pretty serious and they're good, but they're just like. It makes those types of films where you watch them, and while you're watching them, you're miserable. But then when you finish them, yeah, then you, you look back it, at you them, like, it. like yeah. overall, you're like, okay, it's pretty good. <laughs> Didn't you have a friend who liked the American version more? I, had a, I know oh, I know a few people that like the American version more. It's the same thing, isn't it? It's the same thing, which made me annoyed. But I think I, I'm more annoyed by the fact that he had to make it than the actual oh, yeah. version itself. What's the, what's the story behind that? Like, I don't, like, why the hell would he completely remake well, the same American exact movie? Yeah, yeah. So, essentially, the, I won't spoil it, but the film is trying to, like, um, critique American thriller films, American horror films, and I think he's doing it kind of, like, how they depict violence and how yeah. they depict characters. And yeah. so, he got the chance, I think, in 2007 to remake it or to make a film for America. And so, he decided to remake his his version. It's almost, it's, like, shot for shot, the exact same 
he just got different actors, like American actors. Tim Roth. So, yeah, and so mm-hmm. basically the only like real reason some people like the U.S. version more is because the acting. Mm-hmm. Um, but I like the acting, the, the original version more anyway, so. Yeah. Remake it again. Yeah, yeah third time's the charm. <laughs> Make it British edition, even though Tim Roth is British and Naomi Watts is Australian. <laughs> One of your games. One of your games. Uh, cheeky games. Cheeky games. <laughs> <laughs> that kind of sounds like a porn title. <laughs> no, some guy on Instagram was called me, he called me his cheeky little bastard and it freaked me out. <laughs> You're a little cheeky little bastard. I'm like, dude, stop saying that. <laughs> cheeky bugger you. Yeah. yeah. If you guys were asking me about my favorite horror movies, I have to say Hobie Halloween. <laughs> and um, and any David Lynch movie because uh, I don't watch much horror. I do watch horror, but it's like it's either eighties campy horror or like I don't know it's horror. You get me? I, I, again, we're, like you know how PP said that thing or suspense and shit. It's like that. Like yeah. I don't know when I'm watching a horror movie, so so I can't really. Yeah, I feel the same way. Yeah. Like so, so oh, like genre is a stupid thing to me. Like I I talk yeah. to film professors yes, and the first thing they always say is like, oh, what genre do you like? It's like. Who? I'm very. I think maybe besides like literally besides horror, I don't think people watch films based on genre that much. And I think it's becoming harder and harder to really identify what genre a film is because most of the time they're like a weird mixture of a whole bunch. Yeah, of it's, it's there's so much genre. I mean, because literally, if you think about it, I mean, since there's been like over a hundred and twenty years of movie or whatever, I mean, each genre, like going specifically into one genre, is so played out now. It's like. Unless you start yeah. blending, it's kind of, you know, the same thing you've seen for the last 125 mm-hmm. years. So there's no really point in just remaking the same or just doing the same exact idea when you could like blend like 37 different genres and just make it its own thing. Yeah. Yeah. Like Venom 2, making it a rom com and action film. Yeah. Yeah. And as I we think discussed, that was really brunch, by the way, I love that they did that. Yeah, I know. There isn't that much action, is there? Because uh, who wants to see fucking action in the Cape Shit movie? Like it has like Carnage doing his shit, but like really most of it is is just God, Eddie and shit. Eddie and Venom bitching for like that's fucking amazing. an hour. <laughs> and that's why I won, and you know that Jason, because I wrote the Carlton Drake movie. Yes, <laughs> they stole. They stole our movie, baby. Uh, but yeah, horror movies. I guess I guess there's one horror movie I like. Uh, well, I I can classify as horror, but it's more of a campy comedy parody thing. Uh, it's Fright Night, 1985, not the shitty remake. And I stand by that. By Craig Gillespie, director of Cruella and some other shit. Cool. Yeah, the, yeah, the 1985 movie is um, it's pretty, it's like a parody of every single like boy next do- girl next door, and uh, you know horror movie at the time slasher shit. It's like it's like a parody of the both, and it does this through witty dialogue and like weird comedic timing, and the plot in itself has been copied or replicated multiple times after it. And Jason, you know this, uh, but we'll talk about movies that have copied the plot of Fright Night before. But Fright Night's plot is basically, there's a kid, a kid next door, and uh, he thinks he's living with a vampire <laughs> next door, and his mom has a crush on this vampire because he's a very attractive vampire. So so, so this kid's nervous, and he thinks he's a vampire, and he's telling people, and they don't believe him, say like the boy cries wolf. And one day, you know, it, it seems normal. Like, there seems to be nothing going wrong. Then he goes to his neighbor's house, and it turns out he really is a vampire. Dun, dun, dun. Hmm, that sounds familiar to a 2011 comedy horror film. I believe it's called uh, Fred 2, Night of the Living Fred. Yup, <laughs> yup. Fred 2 stole the plot of Fright Night 1985. <laughs> Have you guys seen that, like, random thread where, like, the director of Fred, oh! like, put, like, a, a gummo <laughs> Easter egg in Fred? Yeah, there's a gummo. Do you know what gummo is, Jason? No, what the hell's that? Uh, you know how many Korean director of Beach Bum? Uh-huh. Just this really like weird, disturbing, uh, like the the temperature of it's very warm. It's very bronze looking. This very disgusting diarrhea looking movie called Gummo about kids doing weird. Wait, shit. I think I think I've seen the poster for that on Letterbox. Yeah, one of the producers something is into is kind of a nonce because he like he takes pictures of uh, naked people. Oh it's my. like yeah, it's like but like it's it's weird. It's quote unquote art. I don't fuck it. Like it's creepy, but like it's just got a really dodgy origin. It's a really dodgy movie. You've probably seen it. It's very awful ish. And uh, yeah, uh, there's a there's a Gummo replication in Fred or some shit. And uh, what the yeah, hell? and was it the director uh, PP on the Reddit sub subreddit? Uh, the, a guy DM the director. I think his name's Dick Weiner. 
<laughs> you can look that up. One of the writers directors is called Dick Wiener. And uh yeah, he, he DM'd him and he said, Yeah, cool. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's, it was something like that, right? PP was like it was like a deadbeat reply. He's like, Yeah, cool, you know. Wait, I just looked yeah, it up like... and he said, Oh, there are more. Find some. And yeah. they put an egg. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And then, and this was like the Easter egg that the guy found was like it was like raw bacon just on like the like he's in a bathtub and there's like on raw the side. bacon like yeah. On the side of the wall. <laughs> and yeah, the director was like, Yeah, you have a good eye. There's more though. Go find them. It's like, Yeah. You're weird. Like, <laughs> the guy's yeah. name is Clay Wiener. Yeah, Clay Wiener, that's his name. I thought it was Dick Wiener. <laughs> Why did he call Clay Wiener? <laughs> Yo, we should try getting Clay Wiener on as a guest. Yeah, we should. we should. We should. We should DM him. Being like, Get on the podcast, Clay Wiener. <laughs> Well, yeah, uh, yeah. Someone sent me this afterwards while we're in a call. I'll DM him because uh, I think uh, we're niche internet celebrities. <laughs> but but yeah, man, Clay Wiener, thank you for hiding those Gummo references. We should find them. I told PP this a while ago in a call when we found out about this PP. But um, I want to make an edit of Fred Two or Fred, yeah, the original Fred, and I want to edit it like it's Gummo or like a Harmony Korean movie. <laughs> yeah, I support. Yeah, thank you, thank you. So yeah, that's really weird. Fred in its own self is a very hor- horrific franchise. You know, it's very horror esque. Yeah, <laughs> they they cool. definitely go all in. Yeah, the protagonist Fred kind of feels like the protagonist from Sleepaway Camp. And uh, even yeah, uh, Fred, Freddy Fred Three Camp Fred, but, like the beginning, like you, oh. like he thinks that like people are like cannibals or whatever at the Fred or yeah. s- at the camp or something like that. They're like they're like rats in human <laughs> bodies and they unzip <laughs> and eat people. Yeah, Why is Fred so grotesque? People. Yeah, what the hell is with Fred and body horror? <laughs> they really like that. <laughs> and vampire. And the, oh yeah, even the vampire. You know when they ripped off right now in Fred 2? He, he takes him to his room and it's full of like meat. <laughs> and he somehow he eats meat or some shit and everybody vlogs it and it's like he's got frozen organs. Have you ever watched the Fred movies? Yeah, I watched too. the first one. Oh man, I think the second one... Uh, might be uh, like a scene that I definitely like out of the second one Top is where school. um is where like Fred is talking about his like Judy that like left oh, him and it turns into like a film noir that. scene where yes. he's like I love you baby and so no my god I'm sorry my sugar I shall leave you and she goes away and she does that cringy singing thing that they always make her do yeah and then, and then yeah. Uh, and and the thing with Fred is it's so meta when you watch it when you're older because like they kind of take the piss out of how he has multiple love interests and shit that like change <laughs> actors because <laughs> the actor gets bigger or something. <laughs> Fred is weird. We should definitely get Clay Wiener on to a Fred episode. Yeah, uh, but, but yeah, PP definitely watch Fred. And if you don't want to know how excited I was for Fred too, Jason and PP, uh, that I've got <laughs> I can show you this picture after. On a pen marker, I, I wrote the countdown for when Fred 2 was going to drop on Nickelodeon <laughs> on my wall when I was grounded one day. I think my most embarrassing movie that I've ever been hyped for was the Smosh movie. I was so excited for that. And then I watched I was like, this is the worst movie I've ever seen. Oh, uh, yeah, but... Take me into the envision me into the mind of young Jason hyped for the Smosh movie. Um, yeah, so I, I think this... I don't know what year it came out. 2016 Let me see. or 15. Deadpool. 2015, yeah, I just... Yeah, Deadpool. Yeah, so, you know, I'm... I'm like not even 13 yet, probably like 12 or whatever, yeah. you know, I'm, and so YouTube is like a majority of my, like, that's what I do whenever I come home from school, I watch mm-hmm. a YouTube video and every Friday I'd make sure. Cause I got home at like, I think it was like two 30 from the bus yeah. and the Smosh video premiere at three. And at three, I'd always be one of the first people to watch the Smosh videos because <laughs> I loved them and I love food <laughs> battle. And I was such a huge stan. I watched all their videos. Did you ever get the Anthony haircut? No, I did not, sadly. Oh, sad. I did. But um, yeah, and then I remember I heard the Smosh 2 movie was coming out. I'm not the Smosh 2 movie, Smosh the movie was coming out. And I was like, this is going to be the greatest, the greatest thing ever. I told my dad about it. He's like, all right, we could go see it. Turns out it never even went to theaters. I think it just went straight to Netflix. <laughs> <laughs> and I watched it, and I'm watching it. And I'm like, "What the fuck is happening in this movie? It was so bad. It was so awful. It has like Stone Cold Steve Austin at one point. It's actually, and you know, the director of it is fucking Alex Winter. Yeah, that's what <laughs> from Bill and Ted. Oh, God. That, was, Jason, that was something. This will determine if you are a true Smosh fan. Did you ever download Food Battle, the video game? On, yes, on the yes. App store? Yes. yes, and then you yes. needed it a week later because it was shit or some shit. Yeah, it was so such a bad game. <laughs> oh god. Uh, PP, Wait, I'm what sorry. team? What team were you? I was always Team Pink Frosted Sprinkle. I was donut. Team Pink Frosted Sprinkle Donut because you always <laughs> wait to see Ian win. 
But exactly. Like, Von Ian, Ian gives me dude. Ian gives me uh what Charlie vibes. He does, yeah. He gives me Charlie Day vibes. Really <laughs> then again, they watch it so much in Philadelphia because uh, if you rewatch any Smosh, blank if real video from like two thousand and. Nine all the way to two thousand when Anthony left. Uh-huh. They start off with the It's Always Sunny Philadelphia music. I wow, I haven't even. I'm gonna have to watch that now. I'm I'm curious. Yeah. <laughs> they they also has the black frame with the title card, like the white smartphone. P P, like, are you a are you a smasher? Um, I think I luckily missed that. <laughs> like, because you're I an old man. Watching YouTube late, so I think like the earliest thing that I remember watching like a lot was Equals Three. Who? What? Uh, with Ray with Ray William Johnson. Oh, Ray William Johnson. Okay. Do you know Ray William Johnson? Yeah. Uh, uh, is, is Jason? I don't think I do. He's a short dude who does the news and shouts at his crew, and he's got Watchmen posters all over his background. <laughs> yeah. yeah it was... Oh, I oh, I do know this guy's like... face. Yeah, 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 yeah. You know this guy. He's yeah. got spiky hair, the glasses. Yeah. Yeah. That and epic rap battles. Epic rap battles was my thing. Like I would be. So oh yeah, I loved epic rap battles. Yeah. I would. Wait. Tommy yeah. still loves her epic rap battles. Stephen Hawking one. <laughs> I remember my favorite one was the Renaissance Painters versus the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Oh yeah! Oh, Michelangelo yeah. and Donatello, dude. Uh, and then they talk about pizza while they talk about paintbrushes. Deep cinema. Deep. Do you remember the, the best line was? It's like there are ten million, million, million particles in the universe that we can observe. Your mama took the ugly ones and put them into one. I do remember that. <laughs> was that, was that, that one. Was that one. Stephen Hawking. Yeah. yeah. There's a Steven Spielberg versus Alfred Hitchcock one. Oh, that one's good because it has all the directors making cameos. <laughs> Michael Bay. I don't think I've seen that one. In it, in it. <laughs> I have to watch that. I'm going to watch this. I have to watch this one. Damn. I'm, I'm yeah. going back to Smosh and Epic Rap Battles after this episode. <laughs> Smosh, yeah, just started to release, Smosh just started to release like different different content to what they started with because I think they realized the crew can't handle the, the obscene IQ of old Smosh fans, so they started doing different content, but it's cool. I think, I think yeah, Smosh, Smosh fell off once they started hiring other actors to be in their stuff. Like, they, once really? they got that big production check, it just went down. Yeah. So that's happens with a lot of production. I feel like once you upgrade, like, this is a weird thing, but PewDiePie, like, he even oh, said, yeah. like, that's why he doesn't, like, do upgrade his shit. Like, that's why he has the same mic and stuff, because when you upgrade, it feels like you're, you're separating yourself from the audience. And Smosh, I think, besides, like, losing Anthony, that's kind of, like, they became like a production, less like less like creators, rough. I guess. Yeah, they yeah. less rough and creative. Like, I'm pretty sure they have people write their own stuff now. Like they don't even write. Oh, like they sure. used to write for all their sure. shit, but now, yeah, sad. Like the thing with Smosh is back when Anthony was a thing. Like, just they changed like the last year of Anthony, but like before that, they they were kind of like they're like a 2009 camera, and uh, what what do you fucking call it? They would just do videos around the kitchen. And like every every video would use the same set and it used the same supporting characters, it used the same street. So it just felt like a rough little thing, like a vlog, but like through skits and shit. And then there was Smosh Games and stuff, which was a bigger production. Smosh like, Games was, was, was still kind of fun. I didn't I didn't hate yeah. that one. I, I that was busted. Smosh games back in the day with 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 the uh, Smosh vlogs and Ian eating food. Ian eating food. For yeah, Ian eating food. <laughs> <laughs> you are a Smosh child. This is like my favorite co-host. <laughs> <laughs> you know that when you fucking eat food from like Japan or something, they vlog it. There's some people getting it. But like, um, yeah, yeah, that shit was like so 2010s YouTube in my opinion. It just felt like that. 2010 to 2012 just felt like the same like era, you know. Yeah. The internet it was insane. Uh, but yeah, and they, you know, they changed and uh, became more smooth, and it just felt more off. It felt like a script. Mm-hmm. So yeah, at that point, it does stand. And it's weird how we went from horror movies to Fright Night to Fred. To yeah, we just... keep we keep starting at horror, but then we direct off into like our child. Like we're like these repressed childhood memories are coming <laughs> out. <laughs> is this just a therapy session? <laughs> yeah, who would have guessed? Ho- like, I mean, I'm not who would have guessed. This is horror's main thing is uh, repressed uh, trauma, and this is what's happening right now. We're we're exposing all our past, and and never forget, I I literally reenacted the red room shining scene with my wall saying Fred two Fred two releasing now. <laughs> 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 oh god, I can't believe I did that. I think it's still there. You know, it's kind of stayed to some shit, but it's probably like twenty ten or twenty eleven. <laughs> it's probably not there anymore. But yeah, that was, that was a weird little tangent of horror movies. Uh, yeah, Jason. 
the horror man. What are some of your favorite horror movies then? Um, some of my all time favorite horror movies. I think my my number one favorite. I've I've spoken a lot about it before. Um, George Romero's Dawn of the Dead. I've always, always, yeah. really, same thing with Night of the Living Dead. It's usually hard for me to pick between the two, but I just, I just edge out Dawn because I like, I don't know, I like the characters a little bit more, and uh, well, the characters have more of a personality. It's not nothing against the first movie, like it's just that, what is it? I mean, it's kind of like since that all takes place under one night, it kind of, it's kind of hard to connect as well as you do. Even though I give them both films five out of five, and I love them both, and I've seen them both many times, those are probably my. My two go-to, uh, really a lot of zombie films are in my top, like Zombieland. I mean, even though it's more of a comedy, Train to Busan is another one that I really love. I, that was one that I had hyped up for me for so long. And then I finally saw it. And I was like, holy shit, this was so good. I loved it. Um, what were you going to say, PP? Yeah, what were you going to say? You could speak. I was going to like the Train to Busan one. That was really good. Yeah. Yes. Um, Gremlins and Gremlins 2. Those are, you know, classics. Can't go wrong with those. Both of them ridiculous the second one is even more ridiculous i actually have to rewatch the second one i haven't seen it in a while and i need to see like everything that people have talked about with how much of a like parody it is um and then of course the evil dead trilogies up there for me i mean how can you go against that sam raimi yeah. um the first nightmare on elm street what yeah, is it i'm uh, curious actually i'm curious pv have you ever watched evil dead no Wow, cringe. I actually, what is it? Went to see it yesterday in uh, theaters for the Dude, 40th yeah, anniversary. Talk about it. it was oh, really cool. Oh, yeah. I think I saw that they had that at my, um, they had, my friend tried to get me to go, but I had shit to do. Can't the Evil Dead movies pick one. Yeah, um, I got to, you know, because I, I figured I was like, all right, I definitely want to see this. So I asked two of my friends. They said, yeah. So we, we went to see it. And um, I, have, I have more of a story beforehand. Uh, this was that I thought was fun. Um is that uh, so we get there, right? And we we're waiting in line for the tickets, but they have like this, this like they, my AMC is like these like self personal like kiosk or whatever you could do to buy oh, the tickets yeah. on your own. And so we're waiting and we're like, it's all right, it's getting close to 7 30 when the film was going to show. So we just we just went to the thing because the people in front of us were taking so fucking long to get their tickets. I don't think they realized that they were supposed to choose. I don't know what they were, what was wrong with them, but they couldn't they couldn't figure out the ticket fucking thing. So we just went to the kiosk and we go, we we pick our seats and uh. And then we're trying to print the tickets. We put in the money and it says can't print the ticket. And then the guy comes over. Like I'm looking around like trying to see if there's anybody here. And the, the guy that like rips the tickets or whatever and checks for tickets um, comes over and he uh, he's like, um, oh, did you guys already pay the money? And we're like, yeah. And he's like, oh, yeah, sometimes this printer just breaks. And I'm like, all right, well, maybe you should close this down then if it just breaks. And um and then he uh, he's like, oh, what movie are you guys going to go see? Do you remember your seats? I was like, uh, yeah, we remember our seats. We're, we're going to go see um, The Evil Dead. And he's like, oh, The Evil Dead? I'm going to have to ID. You guys got IDs on you? And I'm like, I'm thinking like, yeah, I'm fucking, I don't, like, I, I think the shortest one of the three of us were like 5'10". And we're all. 5'10", you got afro, you got beard. Yeah. <laughs> like, none of us look like children. I mean, that was the first time I've ever been ID'd. Like, I think for my age anywhere. Like, that was the weirdest experience ever. Yeah, like what, like, and he's like, oh, like, what the hell does he think that I'm like, who the hell cares if I was like 15 and sneaking into the evil dead, but I'm not. <laughs> so it's like, I don't understand what the hell was going on there. I was like, whatever. So then we did get in. And then first Bruce Campbell was just like, it was like uh, two things like cut together of him talking about the film at different times and how like the four and reflecting on the 40 years and stuff. Yeah. And that was cool. He talked about the Spider-Man trilogy a little bit. Hey, 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 let's go. The PP trilogy. Because he loves those <laughs> movies. So you PP. I don't have an opinion on them. I watched them when I was a kid. They were pretty good. Are those the only, yeah. Are those the only Sam Raimi or Spider-Man movies you've watched? Or have you watched all the Spider-Man movies? Um, I think I've seen all of them. <laughs> Damn. Damn, PP's a true fan. Yeah. I, I literally, I definitely saw the original trilogy. Um, I definitely saw The Amazing Spider-Man, two of them. I, I remember the second one a lot. And I've seen the Tom Holland ones. So, yeah. You seen into the Spider Verse too? I would assume. Yep, that's a good one. That's very good. Yeah, you, you like the Spider Verse, don't you? Yeah, I was gonna say because you don't like the character that much, do you? I don't. Um, I just don't. He's fine. I just don't like. GJK, um, come get this man. Yeah, GJK, Kono, go go cancel him. I make oh. Spider Man movie now. Give me sixty k. GJK. Uh, this is this is gonna what do you fucking call it? Me and PB are gonna make a movie. It's gonna be called uh, what's it gonna be called? Uh, um, cheeky games. Cheeky. 
<laughs> we're gonna we're gonna make a movie called Cheap Games. It's a horror movie about librarians who kidnap kids to watch Hotel Transylvania. <laughs> <laughs> But Hotel Transylvania. <laughs> it's, it's what is it? I think the story should be uh, what is it? Um, it should be uh, like you know how in Misery he's writing a book or whatever, and she's like the number one fan. Well, PP, you should be the writer for the next Hotel Transylvania movie. Oh, yeah. But but she when she reads in the script, she get she realizes that you kill off Dracula, and she can't handle that. <laughs> so she forces you against your will to write the Hotel Transylvania five script. And when you don't, you get your legs broken, like in the movie. Yeah, she breaks my legs. Yeah. Oh my god, that's amazing. Actually, thinking oh. about Misery, that is also up there for my one of my favorite horror movies. I've, I actually read the book earlier this year, too. So that was, oh, cool. That was, oh, yeah, you did. You got it for both or something. Yeah, I got it for yeah. Christmas. I was I was yeah, excited because I, I wanted, I was like, oh, I'll try Stephen King novel. And then I did, and I, I liked it a lot. It was good, so. yeah. Maybe again yeah. this year, I'll ask for maybe like Pet Cemetery or something like that. I have no clue. I've read a few Stephen King. I like his stuff a lot, too. He's pretty good. Pretty good. Yeah, his, his writing's very... Long, yeah. uh, the Long Walk? Okay, well, let me very, write very this good. down. What is it hasn't own? been adapted. Is this Stephen King an underrated author? Underrated writer? That people should look up? Underrated? Um, <laughs> Und- <laughs> indie, yeah. indie writer Stephen yeah. King. <laughs> indie writer Stephen King, who is not wealthy at all and has made no money. It's Stephen Maybe King adaptations are weird though because they're either like grand masterpieces or oh, they shit. just or or every because yeah. every year there's always like a, maybe or every other couple of years or whatever there's always one it's either like the worst thing ever or really good there's no one between like yeah. remember that movie Cell with uh yeah. with oh, John Cusack and fucking yeah. Samuel Jackson like oh who, god yeah oh, how do you make it that shit like how is that even possible yeah. now here's the thing here's my concern and why I think they turn out shit or masterpieces it's because they're based off books yeah. Like, they're just based off massive horror books, and therefore they can't. Re- they're either really good through the creative literature or not. And that's also why it's, it's kind of easy or hard, depending on the comic book, to write comic book movie dialogue, because the dialogue is so different to reality, and you're kind of phased by it, and therefore you've created something that's like in a weird, you know, little world, and you can do anything in it. You can kind of cheat with it, and therefore some things like some people rip off straight Stephen King plots and don't change anything about it in their movie. Those movies can either, you know, turn out kind of crap and shit because nobody's putting a creative, like, twist to it and nobody's, like, actually trimmed the dialogue and crap like that. It's like uh, it's like making a TV show movie or a TV show prequel. It's the reason why things like Twin Peaks Fire Walk With Me and Many Saints in Newark get the critical reception at first. And I think Many Saints in Newark will get the Twin Peaks treatment where people end up actually liking the prequel in, like, 50 years' time or 20 years' time or whatever. Because, like... The pacing is so different, isn't it? Making a TV show movie to like a normal movie because it those characters that you're used to them in a TV show and the pacing in a TV show is much different than it is in a film. Yeah, it's completely different than having like a three act structure. Everything in the story has to pretty much be pushed forward immediately. Yeah, and that's why a lot of people don't know how they feel about certain TV show based movies because of the pacing. Community movie, six seasons in a movie. That's like six seasons in a movie. Peepee loves community as well, don't you? Peepee, Spider Man, community. Those are the two things he loves. Yeah, PP. Do you actually not like Community? Is that a? Is that... I don't. Uh, I don't know. Thing. I don't not like Community. I don't think it's some like great meta. Boo! Boo! It's not that good. It's boo, not that good. Boo, it's not that good. Cry about it. He doesn't boo, like TV shows that end with that. like everything being resolved. That's one of the things I don't like. How yeah. it tries to be all like wink, wink, nod, nod, like. Uh, we get it, but then also, like, every time it's, like, formulaic, it's always, like, we mm-hmm. learn something at the end. Jeff isn't such an asshole, right, guys? Like, <laughs> oh. up, like... On the next episode, he's an asshole again. Yay! Yeah, it's, like, we're so... I don't know. I don't, I don't like, like, I think episodic You don't like shows, episodic television? Either. How do you not like Abed? That's literally every film account. Abed's okay. <laughs> I didn't hate him. Me and you are trying Abed, Jason. Yeah. Trying Abed in the morning. Morning. <laughs> Who am uh, I? Am I Chevy Chase? You're Brita. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. You could be Brita. You ruin everything. You do ruin everything. You're You're the right. blonde woman. Yeah. Jacobs. Okay. I'll yeah. take it. Chevy Chase is Hulk Union. Yeah. Chevy Chase is definitely Hulk Union. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> 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 well, we're not saying we're saying offensive for old dude, man. Hulk Union. Because all he does is shout. And then we got, um, what would we cast the other people as? Forget it. We'll, we'll get our fan casting done later. Yeah. Yeah. That's community. And obviously, Peepy's hyped for the movie, just like he was the show. Yes, he loves the show. There's a movie coming? 
No, no, it's just a joke. I, Boo, I, you wouldn't get I, it. You wouldn't get it. You're not a fan sorry, of the sorry, show. Yeah, I'm, so I'm, so I'm, sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. But but the movie might come sometime. Hopefully. I think PP PP, have you watched Rick and Morty? Yes. Rick and Morty. Do you like Rick, Rick and Morty? Rick and Morty. Rick yes. and Morty. Rick. You like it? Rick. Rick. I was, yes. I was gonna think it was something like he doesn't like Dan Harmon because Dan Harmon does that wink wink comedy thing. Yeah, how do you how do you like Rick and Morty even though yeah, it's literally wink because... wink comedy the entire I mean, time? No, wink, it's, wink, it's wink, wink comedy, but it's it Dan goes Harmon. so far that it doesn't actually like still go into what it's making fun of. Like if you're making fun of something, that's I, I love that, but then don't like do it then unironically. Rick and Morty makes fun of everything and then doesn't actually like go into what it's making fun of. And that's why I like it. You gotta also remember one's an NBC show, the other was Adult Swim. Yeah. Yeah, I, I, I don't blame Dan, Har- Dan Harmon, but I don't... Yeah. I think Community was kind of like restricted in that regard as well. But That's interesting. If, if they can't say fuck in the show, then I'm not gonna watch it. That's interesting. That's why it's always funny in Philadelphia is a superior show. Okay, True. that one that one you cannot say fuck, but I still love it. That one, that show is like the definition of like what a good sitcom is. It's like Looney Tunes on heroin and crack. Yeah. I love that shit. And I, I've been binging New Girl and that's like sobered down. It's always so new Philadelphia. It's weird. It has Hulk Union like... in it. Yeah, Hulk Union, Jake Johnson. I, I like it. I don't think people will like it. I don't know. Look, it's weird. I don't think you like it because I, I watched. Results. I watched it when I was younger and it was okay. But you like I was, it? Like, uh, not... Mid, yeah. I was like I, fourteen. I enjoy it, uh, but it's it does this thing where it's got these. It's always something Philadelphia stereotypes. Like every character is a stereotype. But it's always something Philadelphia character. They all hang out at a bar. They all do loony wacky things. Except <laughs> it's like a sober down version. There's no cursing. All the characters are very quirky and like. Um, what do you call it? Even though they kind of affect the people around them, it's like uh, every episode has res- resolution. So it's kind of like, oh, and also every always in Philadelphia character has a cameo in the show. Like, like really? the actor, the actor playing him has a cameo. Yeah, like, like even the waitress is uh is Jake Johnson or Nick Miller's uh, girlfriend. I did not know about season. that. And she has like multiple episodes. She's his ex. Uh, what do you call it? Cricket is in an episode. He plays, like a head, he plays like a head teacher or something <laughs> of a school. Uh, who else is in an episode? Uh, oh yeah, D. Caitlin Olsen's in an episode. She's in an episode too. Oh my yeah. god! And they also do a crossover episode of Brooklyn Nine Nine, where they go in New York and then she gets stopped by the cops and you see Andy Samberg and it turns into a Brooklyn Nine Nine episode. <laughs> so, so yeah, it's I pretty- feel like New Girl is a part of the the Wayne's universe where it, the Wayne's uh, brothers are just in <laughs> random shit. Like sometimes it's really good and sometimes it's really bad, but for depends some the reason brother. they're in literally everything. Yeah, it depends on the brother. <laughs> There's one. No, is it Marlon who does every single thing? Marlon does all the comedy movies. Yeah, but he was also in um. He's also in like Rec Room for a Dream or something like he's that. Like Pia Coppola movies as well, isn't he? Yeah, I think he was in uh. What what was that movie? We watched in it. The rocks. Um. Yeah, on the rocks. Yeah. On the rocks. Yeah. Yeah, like he does like so much. Like I don't know. All the all the brothers do like really random projects, but for some reason they keep getting casted. So keep doing it. Yeah, PP, who's your favorite Wayne's brother? Yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> he probably has not seen a single Wayne brother movie. <laughs> I saw he's a, White he's Chicks. A there we go. Did you like White Chicks? Um, I was like a kid, but I liked it. When I... Oh, I also, you know what I saw recently actually that I guarantee neither one of you have seen. What? Have you seen Naked? But with Marlon Wayans, it's on Netflix. I have seen that movie. It sucks. You have? No, you haven't. I have. It's on Netflix. I watched it. Well, okay. uh, <laughs> what's it about? What's it about? I was walking, walk. Isn't it about his wife or some shit? And uh, he has some resolution. And he also has one called Sex Tuplets or some shit as well. Yes, yeah, Sex about- Tuplets. Yeah. <laughs> and, I, and I mistake the two, but one has to do with all these like ugly twins or some shit that are after his wedding, and the other has to do with him being naked during his wedding day or some shit. Yeah, naked is like it's like yeah. Groundhog Day, and he's like every day he's naked. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> is, yeah. I mean, what would you naked. what would you rate this film, PP? Uh, I don't like. I don't know, like. Four point five, five. Yeah, you heard it here first. PP thinks that Nick and Marlon <laughs> Wayne's is five out of five. I don't misunderstand masterpiece naked. Uh, no, PP, what do you actually rate? Like three out of ten? I mean, I probably give it like a like a two out of ten. Or <laughs> yeah, like it. it was not. It was pretty terrible. Have you seen Sex Two Plus, PP? <laughs> I am not. <laughs> you should watch it. Uh, you should watch it, bro. Great. I like yeah. to see that on your like uh, film log. It's like all these like. 
nineteen yes. like sixties slow burn Japanese Japanese film, and then it turns into like a haunted house two or sex tablet. Like, <laughs> 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 yes. <laughs> oh, I, I watched Grown Ups so two. Re- I watched Grown Ups recently. Is that a yeah? I saw that. I saw, wasn't it like your your Netflix wouldn't allow you to move out from the comedy yeah, section? Was so weird. I was like, I'm in my hotel room. And, like, the remote control was, like, not going up and down. And I, there was no other apps on there. So, I could only go on Netflix. And it wouldn't let me go up and down. So, I was stuck on the comedy section. I'm like, you know what? I like growing up when it came out. Let's let's give her the old college try. Was that your <sighs> first ever time? Oh, no. You watched it. You, you said you watched it before. No, I've grown, up, I've seen it grown ups from the childhood watch to the now watch is like I don't even know what the hell what the hell was wrong with me. Yeah, like, it's, it's so it's different. Traumatic. Yeah, I think I think not only is it an awful movie, but it's also very dated. Yeah, oh, it definitely, dated. and it's yeah. also Happy Madison, so you already know it's <laughs> you know it follows all those tropes. I still can't believe Funny People is a Happy Madison movie. Yeah, that's like the that's only hilarious. Funny Games, the Happy Madison film. You know how we make all these jokes? I think everybody makes these jokes about... In, they have scenarios in their head where they're like, imagine someone walks into an Adam Sandler movie like Uncut Gems or Punch Truck Love Expecting Happy Madison movie. Well, um, people do do that. but like, Yeah, if, if you look at the Rotten Tomatoes reviews for like yeah, Uncut Gems, like the audience score, like a lot of people are just like, I went in and this is unlike anything Sandler's ever done. I hated this it. This ain't funny. Yeah. <laughs> but then like, the thing is though, like those movies aren't like advertised as Happy Madison movies. Funny People is, like, it has uh, the logo and everything, and it is a Happy Madison movie. So people actually walked in there expecting a wacky movie about Adam Sandler and his two racist Republican kids, and, <laughs> and Kevin James playing their uncle, and how they have to stop the hot head teacher from sending nudes out to every student. <laughs> wacky hijinks since you. They're probably expecting some shit like that, but what they actually got was a parody of Adam Sandler's career, calling all the movies that you guys watch shit, and then him dying of cancer. <laughs> Uh, PP, have you seen uh, Funny People? I feel like you have not, but you should. I have. I really you have? Liked it. Yeah. Like you it. liked it? Wow. Yeah, oh, wait. Yeah, yeah. I feel like I have seen that on your Letterbox before. Yeah. He, that... he said it. He said it before, yeah. Yeah, so that, like... that's pretty good. Pretty keen. Yeah. So it's kind of funny that that movie parodies Adam Sandler's career, and those same people watch that movie and it's produced by those people. And even kind of parodies Judd Apatow himself with, like, uh, Knocked yeah. Up. Like, I feel like it kind of has, like, a, a few yeah, throw-ins yeah. at Knocked Up. I mean, with the whole group being together or whatever in the same apartment. Yeah, there's something about uh, I think there's references to Judd Apatow in that movie as well. But yeah, that's uh, that's funny people. That's a weird career of Adam Sandler. Uh, Wait, RZA it? is in Funny People. I am yeah, just he, finding this out now. He has a cameo, oh. man. RZA. Yeah, thank you. Does. RZA's got like a few lines actually in the movie. I think everybody's a cameo. Like Eminem and Ray from Everybody Loves Raymond is in the fucking. Yeah, movie. I, I remember Raymond being in the movie. <laughs> Bro, when you guys were high schoolers, did anybody on their iPod touch ever show you that scene of Eminem swearing? What? Oh, what? Yeah. From funny people. I, I don't know why, but that was trending in my high school. People were like, haha, Eminem's funny. That scene, and when he says, when he's in the interview, in the interview, those scenes always trend because people love Eminem in high school. Oh, I do. I, I've seen that, that interview one. scene a million yeah. times. That one, yeah. Yeah, yeah on the iPod touch. <sighs> it's so unfunny. So It's kind of funny how Eminem's career is kind of getting carried by Venom as well. Yeah, that's all he needs to <laughs> succeed. Yeah. Would you agree that his Venom songs are better than the rest of his music discography in the last 10 years, PP? Last 10 years? Well, 8 years. Alright. Here's I kind of liked a little bit off of Kamikaze. You uh, Kamikaze. Yeah, you liked Venom off of Kamikaze. Yeah. I did like Venom off of Kamikaze. Yeah, exactly. But there's like, well, there's one or two other songs I liked down there. But overall, yes, I agree. Because he has had this shit career the past like 10 years. Yeah, literally. Uh, his best songs have been Venom and the MGK diss track. Oh, yeah. You know what I don't understand is uh, why does why does Eminem randomly name drop Dr. Dre? Like, I know they like Dr. Dre, but like yeah, Dr. Dre and him cool. aren't like, you know, I don't know. It's so I weird think. that he <laughs> that he just he just is like, oh, Dr. Dre, you know how you're really you're like re- this really awesome producer that's like an icon and everything. <laughs> I'm going to name drop you in Venom, by the way. It's because like, it's because you know how Venom and Eddie love each other and they don't even know it. It's like that. With Doctor <laughs> Dr. Dre and Eminem. That's why Eminem's been through so many divorces and shit. He wants to go after Doctor Dre, but Doctor Dre's married. <laughs> oh no, he's divorced right now. Eminem got him. Baby's divorced right now. Yeah. But what was I gonna say? Yo, there's a there's a song from his new album called Stepdad, and you know how he always bullies his stepdad and his actual moment shit and all his music. 
But Eminem like, does. Yeah, yeah. Don't you know this? He hates his like family. Like he. I did not know that. Yeah, yeah. If you listen to him, like listen to Eminem albums, Jason. He he likes in every single one. There will be at least one song where he swears that his mom or his stepdad. But but <laughs> yeah. in his in his new album, music to be killed by some shit. Like, it's the Hitchcock inspired album. <laughs> he, he he says actually he says the, the song's called Stepdad and it goes yeah 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 my stepdad. And he's like, yeah, fuck my stepdad. I fucking hate him. I want to kill him. When I was a kid, I hate my stepdad. Yeah, eh, eh, eh. yeah, me and my stepdad. And he has that whole chorus, and it sounds like it sounds so childish. It sounds like something Diary Wimpy and it's so hilarious. <laughs> we'll all listen to stepdad after this. It's like so corny. It's become an inside joke between me and my friends, but like that's definitely one of his worst songs. It's so fucking funny. <laughs> like he has the childish chorus, and you know he's trying, he's trying, he's trying to do that slim shady, you know, blunt feel with yeah. it. Yeah. And then he's also got like he's just like I want to kill him sometimes. I want to confess my murder for him, but I fucking hate. It's just like he's writing a note about he wants to kill him, like he's in stand. He's don't worry, he'll do the Super Bowl halftime show. So awesome. <laughs> me and my stepdad. <laughs> oh, God. Yeah, you guys listen to stepdad after this, okay? <laughs> Listening to Keno. Yeah. But yeah, man, that's Eminem. <laughs> Speaking of Eminem, favorite Eminem song, PP. Um, are Step we counting down. Lose Yourself? Is that too basic? That counts. Fuck it. <laughs> All right, Lose Yourself. He's not exactly a good rapper, is he? Poor guy. I think he's not that good. No. No. But what about you, Jason? No, I don't. I, I I don't listen to him. I don't like his style. I don't. I don't really. I you know. I don't think that rap is good. Like if you can rap fast, cool. But I don't think that that has no substance to it. Like if you're saying random bullshit for really fast, like, that He's doesn't like, mean anything to me. Drake is like the fucking McDonald's of rap <laughs> or hip hop or R and B or whatever the fuck he does now, pop music. And Eminem is like the Happy Madison of it. <laughs> like like all his shit gets lots of money in the box office everybody knows who he is he's so famous he's like the richest you know he thinks he's the goat of shitty comedies and uh and he's got like two good movies in there but like the rest of his shit is awful and people still buy it i'm like i'm like i'm 99 percent like sure that uh people only like eminem because he's white like i'm gonna oh yeah definitely literally it's just it's just a way for a white person to be like oh i like rap because yeah. i like eminem like that's and Macklemore. Yeah, <laughs> I can't believe Macklemore beat Kendrick. Oh uh, my god! Wait, what? Yeah, yeah, beat him for was it to pimp? It wasn't to pimp a butterfly. It was a uh, my a good kid, Mad City. Uh, he yeah, uh, good kid, Mad City. Macklemore beat. That's sad. It was best rap album or some shit. He beat him. Oh god! And I think he even said like something like, "Oh, next time, kid," or something like that. Yeah, he next did. time, he kid. Him. He treated him something like, don't worry, next time you'll win. You're the real winner. Champ. <laughs> I'm like, he's the older guy. Oh, my God. Well, jokes at him because Kendrick is on the Super Bowl show with Eminem. <laughs> yeah, I, I feel like that's also another thing with Eminem being um, a part of the white Super Bowl halftime Republican. show. That, that I swear to God, they literally just put him in there because he's white. For the Republicans, the, yeah. Like, Republican. Yeah, for the Republican men. That's literally it. Like, I, everybody in the world would have been fine. And it was the same thing they did whenever they had Travis Scott and Big Boy. And then they're like, oh, Maroon 5, too. Like, you, like that oh, NFL yeah. does not have to pander to this white audience. That's cringe as hell, man. Just fucking yeah. put who you want in there. Why the fuck were Maroon 5 in there with Travis Scott and Big Boy? Well, you saw, like, how, like, the NFL, like, when players started kneeling, how mm-hmm. all their white audience members started flipping out. Yeah, yeah. they're like, I can't, I, I remember whenever Mike Pence showed up to a game and they started kneeling and he left. And he's like, I can't watch this disgusting act happen on but field. Then, like, just NBA, mean, NBA, they do it and people don't give a shit because the NBA is, like, relatively more progressive than the NFL. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I think the the NBA is one of the more progressive things. The only thing they really need to put a fist down on and, you know, kind of spread more is uh, how bad homophobia is. Because I think that's the thing that affects lots of sports. It really, they really help the LGBTQ community do that. Yeah, it doesn't. Yeah, yeah. there's a lot, of, a lot of the fans are very... Oh, very sus. you sound sus, bro. You call your guy hot sus. <laughs> Like, I remember um, the NFL player recently, like, Carl Nassib came out as gay, oh, yeah. and literally everybody just made fun of him. Like, what the hell is wrong with you? Like, there's literally who cares? It means and you, nothing. And you guys know how I hate that shitty TikTok low IQ trend of how people go, my respect, stocks go down. When oh, I hate that. I hate those so much. Oh, yeah. Uh, like, uh, God, I literally see a shitload of those replies in NFL comments. It's like Kirk Cousins being homophobic in 2014. They're like, my respect for Kirk. Oh, oh. Oh, yeah. God, oh, I hate God. I hate people so much. My God. 
Oh god, fucking hell, man. But yeah, um, and NBA is most progressive spot. You know, that's insane. Me and my stepdad. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the one of the main reasons people like Eminem is because he's white. Like he really is generic, like rapper, isn't he? Yeah, he's the, what else? What else to see? I mean, he rapped fast. Like I don't care at all. That's Nor have I thing. ever cared. His, all his songs have the same exact um flow. Yeah. It's and uh, what like even even his like uh, message is like without the me the rap game would be nothing because I'm cool oh, and awesome. Pee-pee, like, no, you're not. Likes to mention that PP. That's one of the reasons why you also don't like his music, right? Because he always has like the thing where he calls himself the goat and shit. Yeah, like here's the thing. I have a very thing, a touchy thing with, with rappers when when their main subject is look how good I am. I'm better than the others. But like it's fine. Like if there's a verse or two, because you know a big thing about rap is like clout and image, but. When like the whole song is literally just about like how great you are and how you're the greatest and you have nothing to say, like that's what J Cole's most recent album was like. The mm-hmm. only time it worked for me was when Kanye did it because he was doing it ironically, like when he's like, "I am, a I god. am a god." Yeah, yeah. Uh, I know. I love, I love, like even, I mean, and even with that though, it's like he he had already proven himself to be like the best. you know quite literally yeah. the best in the rap game. Like with yeah. Eminem, what is? What has he done? And then he's just like, without me, the world would be shit. The rap game would suck. Like, no, Dr. Dre honestly <laughs> would just move on and find somebody else that was better than you. Yeah, Snoop Dogg would have popped off more than he already has. <laughs> that's, the, that's another thing about Eminem. You know, he, he thinks he's the GOAT and he thinks he's inspired generations and Kamikaze was a massive distract to everyone. <laughs> he thinks he inspired every single person. He's the thing, right? When Kanye he really inspires thought people, he did something. Like he that. really thought he did something with that, yeah. When Kanye inspires someone, he inspires the next generation of rappers. Like the next generation of what trending sounds are and shit. Think about all his yeah. albums and all his like experimental shit and look at Travis and everybody else, right? When when mm-hmm. when uh, don't repeat, I don't I'll let you talk after. I'll let you finish. But I just gotta okay. say, <laughs> when, when Eminem inspires people, you know who he inspires? NF Logic. <laughs> you know, corny fast white rappers that just consistently really fast and they talk like this. Hello, my name is Elders Movies. Like you're writing the entire Republic of Philosophy and Jason Kelly as well. Yes, go woohoo. People like that. And um, as we know, on Metacritic, on Fantano, on PumpkinPhilosophy.com, all those sites, those rappers <laughs> usually have the lower ratings. They're usually the ones that are the less critically received. They're the ones that have like the most toxic fan bases. Those are the ones that are the worst rappers in when it comes to fan bases and reviews, right? No offense to them. Compared to who Kanye's inspired. So, so, so Eminem, the only people you've inspired are probably critically and reception wise the worst people in rap well he also has inspired that one picture that's like one time a soldier asked eminem for his autograph oh, eminem replied if i could get yours first <laughs> yeah. uh, so Pippi, what were you gonna say i was gonna say like um so in 2000 i think eight or nine i think 2008 when kanye did like the vma thing with taylor, with taylor swift yeah and everyone absolutely hated on him he got shit on like for a full year about it he yeah. came out with my beautiful dark piece of fantasy. Yeah, <laughs> with with Eminem when his when he got shit on for his <laughs> shitty album, he just came out and went yeah, and then he said kamikaze. <laughs> he <was> like, oh. <laughs> and he also he also called Tyler the f word or something in a song in kamikaze or some shit because he heard Tyler say something bad about him in an interview once. Like Eminem is just so petty for no reason. Yeah, it's so no funny, reason. and the, you know, you, the, the reason I mentioned this Tyler thing is because it was brought up in an interview, and the guys like stop beefing with youth. You could collab with them and shit. And he's like, yeah, you know, I probably shouldn't have done it. I edited it though. I can like that's a good thing. <laughs> Thank you, Eminem. You edited something. You you reversed job. it because you thought nobody would hear it. Thank you, Eminem. Instead of pointing out, <laughs> you did something bad. I love Eminem. Uh, <laughs> Venom really is the best thing he's added to society. That's all. That's all I care about from him now. Venom is his stronger or power? <laughs> <laughs> oh god, I can never remember. Coming for the Venom three song. What do you guys? The next one's gonna be like a ballad, rom com, proper pop song. Yeah, I feel like I feel like we should we should get like an emotional ballad version of the first Venom song. I think I think the third Venom song will be um it'll be Eminem doing his best Total Africa Weeza cover. Yes, I think it should be. He's gonna bless <laughs> the rains down in Africa. I hear the echoes shadowing in the night. I bless the rains down in Venom. <laughs> yeah, I bless the rains down in Venom. He's yeah. got that adrenaline momentum. He's got that adrenaline momentum. Venom. 
I blessed the reins down in a venom. You know, he's a line where I go really fast because I don't know why I can't go past. I hit my fucking snap and I want to kill him with the gas. And what is that? Except with the automatic. That's called philosophy. He doesn't even know. It's called a film tired of the music tired, but it's coming out somehow. And I don't know what the fuck I'm doing right now, but let's go Venom and Eddie. Let's go kiss him. He's wrestling. Somehow. Thank you. Spin I don't know how, I don't know how this became the music tired instead of the film tired. But yeah, we. Know. I was talking about watching the Evil Dead in theater, <laughs> <laughs> but that was that was that was a fun experience if I had to say so. And then on the way out, I got to t- I picked one of their posters they had, but they had nothing good left, so I took Small Engine Repair, a film starring John Berenthal that I had never heard of, but oh, it has yeah. good reviews. This, this movie died like a 100k box office and budget or something. Quite literally, like a movie that I don't think anybody knows about, but I'm gonna watch it now because I have the yeah. poster. And it's it totally seems cool. Why not? John Berenthal is a is a cool guy. It was that or Cry Macho, and I really didn't want Cry Macho. <laughs> oh god, Cry Macho, Brody's favorite movie. Yeah, Brody's five out of five film. And why did he give it five out of five? Because I am, I am. Did you watch the Cry Macho episode of Tyrant PP? No. Okay. Boo. So there's a there's the one of the massive plot points in Cry Macho is 91 years old Grandpa Skeleton Clint Eastwood. He goes to a place to save someone's son. And there's like a his he has a hot mom, and she she's like forty <laughs> and she's like forty one, and she wants to fuck Clint Eastwood who's ninety one, and he's like no, no, I don't do that, ho. And he's like and he's like he's like too cool for her, and she wants him really badly, and that's a massive plot point. I, w- he how, why did no one call him out on that? No one calls him out the fact that he like constantly just makes it look like like attractive women want to fuck him. And he's not you one. Yeah, because oh. he's the director. What are they gonna do? Be like, I mean, he probably doesn't even. He could probably barely hear anybody anymore. They're like, Clint, please don't step on. Please don't stand on the horse. You're gonna die if you fall off. And he's like, okay. Yeah, and then he just does it I anyway. He doesn't care. Yeah. <laughs> I bet Clint Eastwood's the type of guy to be in like a meeting with his agent or producer or something. They're like, Clint, look the new movie. So we're gonna do this, and he just stares at him for four seconds, and then he says, yeah. <laughs> like every second because he doesn't like i think he i mean his name alone has like he can do whatever he wants before you know i mean i don't yeah. i don't know how many more years he's gonna live but i you know like i don't want i don't want to sound all down and like fucked up but he's you know it, it's probably like they just want to let him you know if this is what he how he wants to end his life and his like legacy then just let him do it at this point you turn kind of kaufman-esque by the end of that sentence. yeah exactly yeah <laughs> But what is the mo- guys? What's the movie that made him like be like this? Like you can have Clint Eastwood in massive font, and all the Trump supporters will go watch the movie. What's the movie that made that happen? Like what's the movie that made him big? Like that? Like like that? Maybe Gran Torino. Yeah. Or Million Dollar Baby. Well, I okay. think I think he yeah I think I think what really like kicked off his like Republican you know Dirty is. Harry. Yeah, I was gonna say Dirty Harry. Yeah, yeah I felt like that. That's yeah. definitely uh, you know, a cop world movie. Yeah. And then of course, once he made American Sniper, that just his his clout oh, with yeah. the Republicans just went up to a million. Oh yeah, definitely. I'm thinking right. So it wasn't the spaghetti westerns at all. I think you know that's just kind of boosted his acting a little. But back in the day, those weren't even like well critically recepted, were they? They're like mixed for his acting because he's just literally just there. Yeah. Then uh, then he did Dirty Harry. Which was good for him critically and box office wise and manga wise. Then he did a bunch of shit movies, bunch of shit movies, <laughs> bunch of shit movies, bunch of shit movies. <laughs> then he did Unforgiven. I think that was a big. You watched Unforgiven, PP? No. <laughs> you heard about it? Yeah. This is just me exposing him <laughs> forty minutes, isn't it, Jason? I'm just exposing him. Yeah, PP is a. Everybody claims he watches all these movies. Hmm, hasn't seen any who, of the ones we're talking about. Who claims yeah. that watches all these movies? Hmm, he hasn't seen any of the movies that we're talking about. Seventeen <laughs> K followers for nothing. That's all I, I can say. I don't watch movies. I just sleep. He watches Squid Game. He watches Sex <laughs> Tuplets. <laughs> yeah, it's the only film he, he can watch. Naked. He watches Naked. PP, please yeah. watch Sex Tuplets and review it <laughs> soon. I I, please, if you if you could sit through Grown Ups, I think you you, you deserve to sit through Sex Tuplets. <laughs> well, I don't deserve that <laughs> because you don't know any because you haven't seen any of these movies we're watch, we're talking about. So, watch Sex Tuplets, and that's what we'll talk about next episode. PP, have you watched the Change Up? <laughs> I with Jason Bateman and Jason Sudeikis. <laughs> no, Jason Bateman. Ryan Reynolds. When it came out. Yeah, Ryan Reynolds. Uh, maybe I haven't. Actually. You're talking about the whole pass with Owen Wilson. And yeah, and, and Jason Sudeikis. 
that that, is, that movie has been at the top of my Netflix suggested for the last like week and a half is fucking Hall Pass. <laughs> Same. That movie is like so awesome. It's on everybody's Netflix. <laughs> I've seen Hall Pass. But you haven't seen the change up. I have not seen the change up. I've seen the change up and I've seen Hall Pass. Months. Another movie you hasn't seen, ladies and gentlemen. Who hasn't seen Change Up? Am I right? Yeah, right. Change Up has been on my TV so many times just because it's fucking. Wait, <laughs> you've definitely seen Where the Millers. I don't think you could go your oh, lifetime yeah. without yeah, seeing Where the Millers. Okay, so that's one of those movies that are just same thing with that movie Identity Theft with Jason yeah. Bateman. That's another one that always is on the. It's I just like a random have... TV channel one. Bro, that movie sucks. Out of all the it's so bad. Movies, it's so out bad. Of, out of all the generic Jason Bateman comedies like Change Up and Horrible Bosses, that's the one you can have the least fun with. That's the most like, deadest one. Yeah, I. would he definitely, uh, you know, has an interesting career with that yeah. type of stuff. <laughs> I do like Horrible Bosses, though. That'd yeah, Horrible awesome. Bosses, Kino. I agree. Yeah. Oh, God. Yeah. Uh, PP, what, what is your favorite comedy movie, actually? I'm curious now, because you're a film account. Because I'm a film account. I'm like, you're curious. You shouldn't yeah, which spot. means fun of me, his favorite comedy, comedy movie is either going to be some, like, foreign oh, <laughs> in 19... I have three yeah three three possible things Freddy got fingered a random Charlie Chaplin movie that is definitely not funny anymore or a yeah. 1960s like Polish comedy film about like murder or something like that do you actually so... want to know or are you going to shit on me no no you want to know we a little bit know. of both a little bit of both yeah. <laughs> I don't know for sure I know like two two that come to mind right away are Six and and no I'm joking <laughs> <laughs> uh, super bad is like Probably my number one still. <laughs> okay. That's and also, I like. Alright, at least it's not book smart. That's for sure. Yeah. And I, no. Oh, and then Life yeah. of Brian. I like a lot. Monty Python. Okay, that, that is base. That's a base pick. Yeah, my That's friend showed that to me, like, and I like laughing so fucking hard the whole time. Like, this is really good. What about you, Jason? What are your favorite comedies? Favorite comedies ever? Mm-hmm. I don't know. This is, this is like tough to put me. On the spot. Oh, <laughs> Cry Me a River. Mm. No. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> I guess mine. Guess yours. Yeah, um, Fred three. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and and Jason, you guess mine. Um, I think funny people are on that is on that list. I would assume. My funny favorite is not a comedy. My yeah, it's not a comedy. It's a dramedy. Tra- my, yeah, so there's a comedy. My Agreed. favorite comedy movie is Zoolander. Zoolander, that's a good one. Yeah. Dude, like I'm trying to, movies. trying to, I'm trying to find my my perfect pick. Like, what's the? I need to find like my early two thousands pick that I've probably seen a million times. Mm-hmm. See, this actually, is... I could go with um, what is it? Uh, the Water Boy. I've seen that movie so many times. That's a generic pick, but I've seen that movie you so many times. Water Boy? I have seen the Water Boy. Good boy. What do you think? Or one of the Anchorman films as well. Uh, actually, Dodgeball. Uh, Dodgeball. Uh, Dodgeball is what I'll go with. I've seen what Dodgeball too. Yeah, Dodgeball. A true underdog story. Yeah, that's a good one. Dodgeball's pretty good. He's got Jason Bateman in there as well. Commentator. <laughs> yeah, he's uh he's the he helps out with Gary Cole, a commentator. Yeah, he starts swearing and shit. Well Gary Cole's in these movies, man. And I, I like David Hasselhoff's comedy. cameo in Dodgeball. Yeah, when I think of uh, Gary Cole, I think of a uh, Talladega Nights. Talladega Nights, that's another one too. Anything I've watched, oh, I've Talladega Will Ferrell Nights. and Adam Sandler's early like work Nights. I've seen so much. You don't like Talladega Nights? No, I like it. I said yeah, I think it's good. Yeah, yeah. I like that one. Shit. Yeah, I know. And what, what's uh, what's his name? Um, Sacha Baron Cohen's character in that movie is so oh, yeah. Is that's like one of the best uh, comedy yeah, yeah. characters ever? Like I don't know, so good. Then they make out as a we belong together. Play. <laughs> I thought every movie should end. That's how Venom Two should have ended. Maybe yeah, it should have. It really should have. Yeah. That's how Carlton Drake ends. Wait, yeah, Carlton. Two thousand three song. <laughs> <laughs> PP, I saw you gave Titan a four point five out of five. Pretty good. Pretty yeah, let's yeah, go to that. Know. Let's go to that. No spoilers, please, because I have not watched it. But you can talk about some of the weird shit that happens in the movie. You guys both watched Titan. Yeah, I saw. I got to see it on Tuesday. Which one are you want to talk about? What did about you first? give it? Um, I gave it a three and a half. I, I, I liked. A, I just, I don't know. I like. I don't want to go into spoilers, but the first half and second act are just like so. It's not that they're unrelated, but the first half is like set up at times just doesn't really i, I don't know uh, there's no consequences love, to the I love first how like disjointed it feels though like i like yeah i don't know I, I think it just unfo like it just unfocused the story a little more than like i felt like raw was more focused in terms of like you understood what was everything a lot more i don't know and this film I, I i get like that's what she was going for and i can respect somebody for liking it but i don't know i just felt like it probably should have been a little, little bit more focused on what it was trying to say yeah um, i get that i i need to see raw still um but yeah, I, I really, really liked it. Um, 
I think also I had just like recently given a, like a presentation on horror and I did like a little thing mm-hmm. on New French Extremity. So I read into New French Extremity and was like, oh, this is kind of interesting. And then I watched this film, which is like a really good example of that. Yeah, yeah. I've, and, if you like this movie, you're definitely going to like Raw. It's, it has the, even um in terms of like the filmmaking, I, I wrote about this in my Titan review of uh like just the way that um Julia, what's her like, Duke or now or however you pronounce yeah, her last name too. um just the way that like i don't know she just has a really like good like composition and all like i don't know how to describe it properly without sending like super pretentious but just the way that she frames everything like no matter what it just always looks good like i can't i can't describe it but technically both of those films are like absolute masterpieces like there's there's nothing that i would say like oh that looks terrible like the lighting's nice at all times yeah. just the, the shots itself are just really beautiful and those long takes um and titan it's like at the car show and the, the mm, opening scene, there's yeah, a really nice long yeah. take that happens in Raw too at like a at a college party. There's this really oh, and like you know like people are walking by, bumping into the camera, and it just keeps going, following perfectly. I don't know. There's just a lot to like technically from her. Like I'm very excited to see what she does from here because she you she definitely has like a good a good uh what is it? I don't yeah, know. She's just really good. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> her, like, her professionalism pleases you. Yeah. Yeah. And of course, I also like body. I like I like this mix of like art. Like it's like pretty much like a high quality like drama art artsy film combined in with like you know body horror that was seen as like this like gross like depraved you know like disgusting thing in the eighties and seventies and now it's turned into like oh this is this is a high art form now it's, and it's I'm telling you it's new French extremity that's like kind of yeah I gotta I have to if if there's any other of the like new French extremity films you wanna recommend me I will uh I will have to check them out because those are I don't know I'm very is that a new trend. Yeah, I think it's like only like the last like what 15 20 years or so. Yeah, it's pretty pretty new. I think the, um the like the one that's considered like the biggest one is Murders, but I don't think that's as good. So. Yeah, interesting. But yeah. Uh, we should we should create our own trend. Those three should create our own trend. We should call it the Cheeky Revolution or some shit. <laughs> cheeky Revolution. <laughs> where we we have cheeky in every title of every film. <laughs> oh yes. Oh well, like there has to be at least two lines in our movie where the character says, "Why are you being so cheeky?" <laughs> <laughs> oh god what's the cheeky revolution what, what, what are we gonna do in the cheeky revolution what are we gonna do in our movies hmm what could, what could a cheeky a cheeky <laughs> movie have <laughs> well, <laughs> cheeky little film <laughs> in every movie we get Hulk Union to take off his top and it's his cheeky tied on his chest <laughs> <laughs> yeah I think Hulk Union should be in every single every single one of the films yeah no he's actually cheeky. He can't be Actually, in um, what is it? Character. In Titan, that that girl, um, PP, you'll note like that she talks to in the beginning. That's name is Justine. That's that was actually the that's the same actress and the same name for the character in Raw. Oh, that's cool. Oh, I don't know. I don't really? know if it's like supposed to be the same character, but yeah, it's, it's both Justine and, and the same actor actress. Yeah. So I kind of think mm. it is. Okay. Yeah, interesting. You know when the movie does the movie tell you? I'm gonna watch Raw tonight. I want to watch her all tonight now. The movie doesn't say anything about it, but I just, I like was looking at her and I was like, hey, that kind of looks like the actress from Raw. And then she's like, my name's Justine. And I was like, wait, what the oh, hell? That yes. was the actress. That was the Raw character's yeah. name. Okay, I'm watching Raw tonight. You, you've done it. Buckle, okay, yes. Buckle, really. um, yeah, you'll definitely, there's there's like one scene in there that, I mean, you know, people said that they fainted during or whatever. And that the, it's not, it's not that extreme, but it's really gross. Mama didn't oil. No bitch, though. Titan does involve a good amount of oil. Yeah, That's yeah. for sure. Milky, milky oil. It's like Yum. cars for the new generation. It's like yeah. I'm, I actually made that joke in the theater. This is the prequel to, to the oh. Cars movie. This is how the first car was born. Did you watch this movie by yourself, or did you watch it with friends? I watched it with my one friend from college. I was, oh, that's cool. What about you, PP? Was this a? Uh... I watched it with my dad. What? Your dad? Wow. He was. Yeah. He was definitely like, wow, PP. This is you really, you really shown me a, yeah. a good well, film here. I think you could see on Letterbox, but I watched Venom and then. Like literally, like I didn't even see the post credit scene in Venom because we had to rush to the next theater <gasps> to see this one. Wow, cringe! It's not okay. even a true Venom. It's okay. Apparently, he has one of your, your least favorite characters, and let's not spoil it. Yeah. And Venom. Oh what? yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah. Do you know the the? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So my friend explained it to me. No. Okay. okay. Let's yeah. not spoil it. But yeah, you have to run to watch fucking Titan instead. Titan. Yes. You watched it with your dad. Well, how would he think of it? Did. Um, my dad, his taste in films is very, very like bizarre, unpredictable. Yeah. Um, he actually liked it though. I don't think he no, loves it, good. but he liked it. So you need to watch Bad Boys Two with him. 
Yeah, you need to watch <laughs> the Bad <laughs> Boys <laughs> trilogy. My dad is so weak because, like, there's some films like, that seem like quintessential dad films that yeah. he would not like. But like, so like for example, have like you guys seen team, um, or heard of Sexy Beast? No, what the heard, yeah, that? yeah, that's I the movie with that's uh, really good. You would like it. I think would like it. That's another Gaspar movie. recommended it, but um, it's it's pretty good. It's by the same director of Under the, Under the Skin. Oh, interesting. Yeah. Jonathan I watched, Glazer, I think. I, I yeah. Under the Skin, but I watched Sexy Beast. It's a very yeah, great. I movie. watched it with my dad, like I think on my birthday last year, actually, um, mm-hmm. and he really liked it. But then we watched another film that I thought he would really like. I think it was called like Daddy Comes Home with like Elijah Wood. <laughs> Jason's watched that, I think. Oh, come was come it? to Daddy. Yeah. Yeah, that's what it yeah, I, I like that one's not amazing, like but I did too. like it. It's it's fun. He hated it. <laughs> yeah, his doctor so, like, is it's like bipolar test. Yeah, oh yeah, it's just very un- inconsistent. He like yeah. will only read like zombie apocalypse books. Like it's so <laughs> he only reads those. It's like it's like oh, he like gas station <laughs> zombies. Yeah, we we'll watch gas station zombies. Yo, I think, me and Jason? I think it's a chemical imbalance he has because it's like. No other genre. No, it's always either the end of the world epidemic, or it's like pure zombie book, and like, that's all he'll read. <laughs> Me and Jason, we're gonna call direct a movie called Gas Station Zombies. We have like twenty pages of the script on twenty seven pages. Oh my <laughs> dad, so if he wants, if he wants to, if he wants to check yeah. it out in the future, we could yeah. Yeah. use yeah. his one. Absolutely month. love that. I'm sure. That's he amazing. <laughs> so basically, the plot is it's about two guys. Who um they're meant to be going to their friend's birthday party, but they don't have a gift and their pieces of shit and their petrol's low, so they just get it from the gas station. And while locked in, something weird happens and everybody starts floating and so you see a weird ass spiritual scene. And then when the lights open again, everybody's a like, zombie. This is the they, end. they have to Yeah, yeah exactly. Like, this is the not, end. It's not it's not it's not aliens or anything, and it doesn't have more glowing scenes. But uh and also the ending is totally different to this is the end and shit. Yeah, we but, don't like, we don't dance in yeah. heaven to the backstreet yeah, boys. Yeah, it's <laughs> <laughs> Uh, you'll see. It's more like, it's like, it's like every other zombie movie trope. It's like, it's like you know battle royale games, PP. Yeah. It, you know how they kind of it's it's like two guys are locked in a room, but it's like this is the end. Where didn't they didn't we kind of take a uh, a little bit of gas station zombie influence from thinking about um the the gas stations in uh, Fortnite? I feel like yeah, that. <laughs> I feel like that, that had an influence so on our idea. So basically, you know how in this is the end, they're basically in like lockdown. In the yeah. in the in the house for the whole time. In hours, they're in like lockdown for like ten minutes, and they have to wander off and actually fuck off and do shit to like you know have like food and shit because there's none there. So they wander off for the full movie, and um, they're also getting beef and shit because they lie to each other about eating food and stuff. And uh, that's when we have more fight scenes outside. And it's like a peaceful countryside, but obviously zombies are there and shit. And then um, what happens is our two heroes find a way to exit or some shit i think they find a cop or something and um and something happens and then uh we will finish that part and then the plot twist is that they go to their friend's house their friend is there and uh this is this is part of a gas station zombies so yeah gonna watch if it, anybody's so ever gonna watch it in like 10 years <laughs> yeah so so they somehow make their friend oh yeah they're on the run from zombies and they're in a car that that is full of fuel so they run away they crash into their friend's house they jump in and they look all dead and shit and then, as soon as they put on the lights, the, their friend is there, and he says he, they're early for his birthday. And they look shocked because they thought they were in the gas station for like six months. And that other look all scruffy, and he's normal. And he's like, "Yeah, you're all early and shit." And it turns out that in reality, they were just taking pills because they were actually stoned, and everything was just a stoner dream. Until the end, which is very inspired by Michael Jackson's Thriller, <laughs> where where he looks at the camera and does the evil laugh, and Thriller plays in the credits roll. <laughs> I mean, it was going to be the greatest film of all time. Yeah, it is it going to be the greatest film of all time. What do you think of it, PP? You think it's a great comedy? I like it. I, yeah, we're thinking about getting Marlon Wayans to play six different zombies. <laughs> <laughs> They're called sex tuplets. <laughs> yeah. I, I, I I just... You said Marlon? I thought you were going to say Brando. First. Brando? <laughs> yeah, yeah, we're going to CGI him back. Um, we got we got permission James from his uh, family. James yeah, James Dean's in it, too. Oh, yeah. Also, PP, our friend who's, who I for the birthday party is called Joaquin. I think yeah. you can guess who Joaquin's meant to be. Uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, but what do you think of our plot? What do you think of our pitch to you? I like it. I want in. How much money can I invest? One point five million. You could be part of the producers and writers and get paid for yeah, it. Yeah, you could. You could. You could co-write. Yeah, which just I means you co-write, could produce, star, direct, assistant yeah, direct. You... I will DP, and I will be the sole writer. 
we were gonna shoot it in a small area near New York, but we'll shoot it next to Texas now for you. Yeah. Yeah. I feel like we get that Texas, you know, Western. Oh yeah, uh, the Western type of like you know, like with like a completely like wasteland. Yeah. It's like the Purge, but good and quiet. <laughs> so yeah, <laughs> the Western vibe, you know, that I'm going for. If we're going to Texan, Texas, we could have like an original score this time, you know. <laughs> Yeah, we, we can have like we can even have like a tumbleweed go across the. Yeah, exactly. And I was thinking like orange, like that piss filter from Breaking Bad. Yeah. <laughs> and then you hear like a zombie scream in the background. <laughs> we do little stare downs. Oh god, we're just yeah, we made a movie. So if you're a producer, watch the film Tyrade. Very rare. Uh, please DM us a comment down below. Yes, please then... watch more of the film Tyrade. We need to we need to figure out a way to start. We're gonna have to make bot accounts to comment. Watch the film type rate on every post because we we need viewers. Yeah, PP, do you have any tips on that? Yeah, what's your what's your trick to expanding? Um, on YouTube or like in general? Because YouTube, general. I don't really know. In general, bro. In general, I just know that when I was growing the most, it was because I was posting consistent. Mm-hmm. It was Snooze. like every can't day. do that. And now I'm like <laughs> I'm basically posting like whenever I feel like it once every like two weeks to a week. And so my follower account is basically just stagged in until I post. Yeah. Um, so dark times on my side. Um, but yeah, I think just consistency yeah. is really the, like, that's like the big thing that helped me. I don't know if you realized this yesterday because I couldn't go to sleep, but I post like four posts in a day and a half. I did you like, just slept. yeah. I should have just. I did no, sleep. Let's sleep. I slept. I slept at five a.m., which is early time for me. You guys know that. That is pretty early. Yeah. <laughs> and the reason I stayed up is because we were meant to film, but then something happened with trash. PP, you're cringe. Well, that was me. It says who? Oh, it says never me. mind. PP went to watch. your beast. PP went to watch a movie. Um, I watched yeah. the Wailing. Oh yeah, I, I was interested in that movie, but I saw you didn't like it that much. What you I did not about? like it that much. On um, the Wailing. Yeah. I don't. I under. I don't. I honestly do not understand why people like it. Like, it's like two and a half hours. Yeah, that's the reason I didn't want to watch it. <laughs> yeah, I didn't even realize it was two and a half hours, so I started playing it, and I'm like, "Fuck!" I already started. Like, I can't. <laughs> like mentally, I have a thing where if I start a movie, I have to finish it. Unless, I, yeah, me too. I get yeah, that. That's unless good. I like fall that's asleep, good. and it's like impossible. But which happened like twice. But like, so I'm like, okay, it's fine. I have to watch this fucking movie now. And like, the first act was was solid, a little like average. But then the whole fucking middle was so random, weird, nonsensical, boring, bullshit. Like, scenes are happening. I'm like, what's happening right now? Like, I've been watching this movie actively. But like, what is going on? Like, why? And then, like, the ending is pretty good. But, like, it's, like, feels like, it, like, this feels like there's, like, five different movies going on. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. And it was just, like, two and a half hours of that. And there was like only like true, truly only one moment that I'll like I'll think about that was actually really good. Yeah. But then the whole rest of the movie is either like so fucking forgettable or just so sloppy, and it's like I don't know. I don't know if people like it. I don't. I don't get it. I don't. That's interesting. What rating did you give it on that box? Did you give it a half star? Give it two and a half. Two and a half. Yeah. 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 Shit movie. What is it? Um. I, I know about falling asleep during movies recently because all that my cinema studies class, my intro to cinema studies class has been is um, no. ni- 19, 1910s fucking slow ass film. So I've, I, I've literally passed out on nearly every single, the only one that I didn't pass out on that I actually enjoyed because we watched in class was the cabinet of Dr. Caligari. And that was oh, the yeah, one, that, was that one's really good. I like, I love the German expressionism uh, on screen, but uh Besides that, like, it's not that I don't, it's not that I hate the movies. It's just really hard to get through a movie that has, like, you know, that has no words. It kind of, I don't know. I just get really tired easily, well, easily which based off. Of watch? Um, we watched the last, I watched The Last Laugh. Um, that's um, F.W. Murnau. I watched, like, we also do, like, weekly screenings. Uh, and, like, they had uh, Nosferatu, which I hadn't seen, but I was glad to see it. I don't know. I didn't like it as much as Caligari, but I could still respect it. I'm trying to think, what else like have we watched? Early, early 1900s, like, I, I actually like, like, I think Chaplin and, and Keaton are actually kind of interesting. We're almost at, I think we're, like, t- we're doing, like, each country's, like, like, each of, like, the, the starting country. Like, country. last week was German expression, expressionism. This week is um Russian uh, film. We're doing, like, That's Battleship Platomakin. Oh, and, um, yeah, that. See, I'm excited for that one. Because I've never had a class like that still. And there's not a class here at my university that does that. 
Really? Yeah, so I, did, I, took a, I took a film history class, but it was like only three countries, really. And it kind of just went, went over like a lot of new Hollywood stuff. And it's like, I don't, I want to like see other stuff. And even like in, in the English department, I took a film movements class because I thought it would be like, oh, John movements and trends and shit. Yeah. Soviet, Soviet montage, um, you know, um, Japanese new wave. I thought there'd be some more different ones, but it was still just French new wave. Italian neorealism, but half the class was just watching contemporary films and, and sh- explaining why Ugh, they were influenced by neorealism and French like new wave. That doesn't like, that doesn't even make sense. How are you supposed to like understand it was, it, it if you're just watching so the new bad. movies? It made me because we watched like Breathless, Contempt, and then we had well, then we watched the movie like Moonlight, and she was like, "Okay, <laughs> now how does Moonlight build on French new wave?" I'm like, "It doesn't." What are you talking about, lady? <laughs> How and does Keanu reference like, Jalo horror? Yes. Keenan. Same with, like, we watched the Flora Project, and she's like, how does this compare to Italian what? realism? I'm like, what? I'm like, what? And go, we get it's, a ghost it's story, a, and so I'm like, dumb. guys, like, I wanted to, like, get different movements. And they just, they really just typed in A24 and were like, holy shit, we're yeah. so advanced. Let's just show them all That's of them. <laughs> why, why is so Logan so similar to Spaghetti Westerns? <laughs> but... There's this one professor who multiple people have told me she's fucking insane. She, like, will make fun of class. Like, she made, like, fat jokes to someone once, apparently. Oh, like, in that... class. And, I, and I'm like, what the fuck? And for, she, like, will make them watch these, like, like, these weird avant-garde films. And, like, apparently, like, she makes everyone sit through the, cred- the credits of them as well. <laughs> but, like, I'm... apparently she's like, has the most interesting lectures. And she actually, like, challenges you to, like, make your own opinions. Yeah, um, and she also like forced the student to give her a ride home from the bus stop once. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, but I want her class so fucking bad. Yeah, I like I like my my professor. She's really like I don't know. She just knows like I mean it's just cool to know, know somebody that knows so much. Like I don't like you know because she doesn't even like really have to look at the presentation to know what she's gonna talk about. Like she just knows, and somebody could ask her a question about something completely different, and she'd already know the answer. Like yeah. she's. I don't know, she's just very knowledgeable and it like helps a lot. I mean, because she just explains a lot of things really well that might not make sense in like a, a 25 page reading on like, I don't know, some random ass thing. And so, I don't know. And then also, like, we have like weekly screenings for cinema studies students, as I said before, like every Thursday. And um, it's like from this other guy who does um, like uh, he has a, a um, Eastern Asian cinema, like new wave class I might take, but I don't know. Because oh, um, he made so us. <laughs> He made us watch um, this movie called Extreme Private Arrows Love Song 1974. That was like a Japanese documentary. And I, I uh, it was horrendous. I mean, it was fucking terrible. We, I watched like oh. two babies being born live on camera. Oh. And it was, yeah, full. And the guy, so it's out of focus, the first baby being born. And he's like, um, he's the, the filmmaker says like over that in with narration, he's like, oh, I meant to, I was so nervous. I forgot that the film was out of focus. Oh. I didn't. So it probably it should have been in focus. And I was like, what the fuck? Thank God she's having twins. And, <laughs> no, 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 no. It was, it was one woman, his, his ex-girlfriend that has a baby with a black man. Um, because she, the, the girl specifically states that she wants a half black, half Asian baby multiple oh, times. And she's very racist to black people throughout the film. What's the and then the other, about? the other one is his girlfriend. Yeah, what is the documentary about? Um, so his his uh his ex girlfriend, um, he had a kid with her, or I guess ex wife maybe or something, but ex partner I'll just say because I don't remember exactly. They had a kid together, but she doesn't like him anymore, so she she decides to go, and she's gonna live with this woman or whatever that is like kind of her girlfriend, but she like bullies her a lot and not really, and um and so he just decides he wants to start recording her like her life or whatever just because he he still has emotions and feelings for her. And um, so, yeah, he just records her like doing shit. But really, it's just her getting into arguments with the girl in the beginning. And then she goes to, becomes like a bar, like tender or whatever. And um, it's really weird. And then she tries to adopt some random kid. She meets a black man that she's like, oh, I need to have his child or whatever. But then she breaks up with him wow. weeks after she finds out she's pregnant. Oh, that's um, Jason... And then, yeah, then she has the kid back in, uh, you know, where where the guy was shooting the dog. Oh, and the guy has the new girlfriend that he gets pregnant. And she hates the girlfriend for no reason, even though she's the one that broke up with the guy. And so it's a whole fucking it, the main character was so unlikable and it was just really difficult to sit through. And it was like two hours long. It was not fun. Jason, this feels like a movie Abed would make. Yeah, this is, this feels like Abed extractionist cinema. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know when he makes a documentary to show his dad how he's crying and emotional. And shit? Yeah. And this one, this if one, this if one, you want to see like 
an actual good Japanese documentary, which I it sounds like you don't want to, but if there is one you want to see, <laughs> I watched one called The Naked Emperor's Army Marches On. Is that another one about babies and being born? Is, no, it's fucking incredible. Like, there's no way you watch it and you won't like What's it about? It. Wait, what's it? The Naked what? Emperor? The Naked, em- the, sorry, The Emperor's Naked Army Marches yeah. On. Let me see. And what's so, it about? it's like about... What's it about, bro? The Emperor's oh, New Groove? Yeah, I do like that. <laughs> you know, yeah. you know, you're, I don't, if I'm correct, yep, you're you're never gonna believe who who directed that film, and also happens to direct another movie that I watched. Ooh, um, it's the same, same director, director, same director, oh, Kazuhara. What? Yep. What? And the weird thing is, okay. is like my, uh, Private what? Arrows has like a three point eight on Letterbox, <laughs> but I I don't know how. Like people are like, oh, this is so this is feminism at its finest, and I'm like, I don't think watching a baby being fucking pushed out of a vagina I'm is a feminism, woman. and it's yeah, it's it's fucking. It, I don't know that movie the was same not director. Worth, the same exact okay, director. But, I'll well, put this, this on my watch is, list, though. <laughs> this one is actually good because the filmmaker does not get involved on camera. What's yeah. About? So he's, but like it's, it's really good. What's he about? It's about like a ex sort of imperial officer yeah. who is like it's older now, and he basically is going after and interviewing all his old generals mm-hmm. who are like kind of much much older because um some one of his like uh, army friends was killed in the war after the war ended. Yeah. So basically, he's just like confronting all of them, um, trying to figure out what happened, and he like attacks some of them. Yeah, yeah the professor was talking about that because whenever he said the title, I was like, that sounds kind of familiar, but I had to check. And yeah, same exact director. He was talking about that one too. He said, "Oh, it's so so amazing." I was like, "I don't know if." I... And the thing was, I forgot that he was sitting right behind um, me, and I was oh. I was telling my friends how much I was like, "This movie fucking sucks," and he was sitting right <laughs> behind me. <laughs> But I did, um, I did email him. So I think in next semester, because like this semester screenings is all filled up, I'm gonna, I'm gonna show the Twilight Samurai and do an introduction to it. So, Kino. I still need to watch that. That looks really yeah. good. Yeah, it's, it's, it's pretty good. It's like melodrama and soapy, and also like you know, like a classic samurai movie from the '60s. It's weird, but it works. <laughs> watch sort of Doom. Watch sort of Doom. Sort of Doom. Okay. All right. Adding this to my watch list. <laughs> I like how this podcast has just turned into us giving us each other film recommendations. Yeah, I love it. That's though. the best types of podcasts. Yeah, yes. bro, we're just so chill. Uh, this is a podcast. I'm definitely. Gl- I'm. I'm glad that we have Spotify uh, episodes as well as YouTube because this is definitely one I'm going to watch in Spotify. Yeah, this Absolutely. is definitely one I, I want to revisit. This one yeah, I, I'm really having is. having a good time, and we're almost at two hours. Yeah, which is pretty crazy. <laughs> yeah, you know we only do two hours. So 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 long. Long. What do you say, bro? So why do my episodes always go so long? Because I don't know. You have shit to talk about. We have shit to talk about, and then we talk about like fucking comedy movies that you don't watch, like sex <laughs> tuplets. <laughs> yeah, it, it, it's because we have so much chemistry together. Like, yeah, we should have a threesome, like hardcore. We should, we should, to be honest, we should. <laughs> we should, we should make a podcast where one guy's volume and audio is a lot louder than everybody else's, <laughs> oh, so nobody yeah. else can hear the guest. He's on Discord and he sounds like, "Hey everyone, welcome back to the film tirade." <laughs> they were gonna discuss how I love to shit myself, and Freddie got fingered. <laughs> oh god, yeah, he was into some weird shit, wasn't he? He was friends with someone that was into some weird shit. Friends oh, with yeah. snacks. Yeah. Yeah. Remember whenever Max Rap Bar called what? me in? Un- <laughs> going, Jason? Remember whenever Max Rap Bar called me a normie because I said that I didn't like Nowhere? Yep. And he freaked out on me. He's like, I understand for a, a normal audience watcher why somebody wouldn't like that. And I was like, you remember, right. you remember he was so passive aggressive to you and he loved me that episode. Yeah, it was weird. It was like I was like, oh yeah, I actually I actually liked Weezer's new album and he's like oh, the chord progression fucking sucked. It was so stupid. And everything that they do is just shit. And I'm when like, what the hell? When you're all they they did completely new chord progression to the whole album. Yeah, I'm, I was like I looked up like yeah. the chords for like some of the okay human songs and like they're like some of the I mean they're the most complex it's been since Pinkerton. I mean it literally wasn't even like you know, made on regular instruments. Versions of it and shit, yeah. Yeah, and he's like, oh, the chord progression was just too bland for me. <laughs> like, what the hell are you talking about? It's probably one of the most stylistic uh, albums from them. Yeah. Yeah. I remember <laughs> me me and Adil, we watched that, like, together. Like, we watched that episode. Didn't we watch that episode together? Yeah, yeah, yeah we did. Yeah, and I was like, this fucking dude is such a prick. Like, I remember after the, um, after we filmed it, I remember we went to go play Jackbox. Yeah. Oh yeah, do you guys, do you guys, do, do you guys remember my amazing drawings from Jackbox? Yes, yes the Jackbox I in the days. Yeah, bro, maybe play Jackbox again. I know, I'm, I miss the the Jackbox yeah. life. 
Alright, yeah. we gotta get it. We gotta get the gang back together. <laughs> They're already back together. We just never play. Yeah, well, because I here's the thing. I feel like I have to initiate and I have to set the time. Yeah. Because no one else does, and then yeah. I do, and then I get busy. Yeah. Yeah. I the <laughs> once ever since I started college, like my free time has gone down like exponentially. It has, yeah. It's yeah. sad. It's kind of weird because like me and Jason used to do all nighters where we used to watch Happy Madison movies, G Force, and play Fortnite all day. And, night. <laughs> and then like something happened where like we became busy again. Like once, once school, once they started letting me actually go to school again, that was the, that was the decline of my life. Like I just yeah. lost all ability to be online. Yeah, literally. Like twenty twenty, we were like binging shit for seventy two hours a day. <laughs> yeah, we'd watch like a Happy Madison movie a day. We did. Oh, yeah, man. we watched two. We watched two Happy Madison movies a day for a week or some shit. That was the. We also did the post where I did the post where it was like every Happy like, Madison. Happy oh Madison yeah, movie. yeah, yeah, yeah. That shit. R.I.P. Kino Flicks. Yeah, then they had to. I remember the day he was, Kino Flix was taken down by he Jerry Seinfeld. G-Force? Yeah, <laughs> we were watching GeForce that day. Yeah, I remember you're like, wait, can you not see my name? Like, you couldn't log into your account. I was like, um, yeah, it says just Instagrammer, and that was the, that was the beginning of the end. And then we watched GeForce immediately afterwards. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, PP, what would you do if your account just went? Um. Is my backup account gone too in this scenario? Yeah, yeah, just yeah. Yeah, say like your Instagram persona was gone, and you had like, would you restart or would you just fuck say fuck it and give up? No, I'd say fucking give up. I'm not gonna lie. I would like, I would maybe tell people like I would probably find the excuse to try to maybe go to YouTube, maybe try to make YouTube essays. Yeah, I've always kind of wanted to do that, but I probably wouldn't start on Instagram again. All right, texting everybody I know right now. Ban or start recording popcorn philosophy. <laughs> so, then, yeah. so then we can get him off and we can take all his followers. All right, we're good. You know what's weird? You know how the podcast doesn't do well view wise, probably because it's a very long like podcast. But um my YouTube videos do decent. Yeah, your YouTube videos like if you don't post a podcast episode, we get you get like like 200 300 400 up to like a thousand views easily and yeah. then as soon as it's a podcast episode it's like six views in 27 <laughs> days yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's it's because the longer episodes but like my my youtube videos are following it's weird i don't even need to share them anything just that yeah it doesn't yeah, doesn't medicament have like uh like, okay. an actual yeah doesn't yeah. It have like an actual um like rating on letterbox too oh, yeah. it has a lot of reviews medicament has a verified letterbox rating because it's got uh the quantity of reviews that you need for it and it's also got it's in so there's this japanese movie right I have to go on my letterbox. So I'm really inspired to watch. And like... Medicine you know how, 2. You know how, medicine 2, yeah. <laughs> you know how back in the day, it was um, it was harder to like, you know, find movies due to streaming not existing and shit. So I'm guessing it was hard. And this is a foreign movie. So I'm guessing it was, it's really hard to watch it. But like, I do want to watch it. And obviously people have heard of it. Let me see what it's called. It's called Black Snow. You guys heard of that? I have not. So it's called. It's Black a 2017 Snow. Martin Hedora. No, no, no. no, 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 no. <laughs> I was gonna say what? Oh, I see it. Uh, yeah, Black Snow. Yeah, yeah, Black Snow. It's got 3.7 verified rating and mm-hmm. shit. And it was it. Medicament has more reviews than it, even though this has more members. Wait, really? Oh my! I didn't even notice that. <laughs> yeah, and it's like weird. It's something I've looked at. This is a bit medicament. It's like so weird. So now oh. you have to watch it, but you still can't let it get more reviews though. Oh yeah, of course. <laughs> uh, has in the soup got a lot? In the soup has got a lot of reviews now, but back in the day, yeah, I swear. Whenever, whenever you watched in the soup, nobody else in the world had seen it. I watched in the soup like months, a few months after, and we, we were like the only you. We were like the only two people. I think maybe one other person on my letterbox had seen it. Now I check, and like twenty five people have seen. It. I'm like, no, don't ruin in the soup. Remember, when everybody was obsessed with um, what living in oblivion instead of in the soup. Oh yes, I do remember that, including pee pee. Yeah. <laughs> Hey, you guys are mean. Yeah. Well, how do you feel now? In the soup has become viral. Yeah, in the soup is better because of my love for it, and people are love it because because Adolfo is a parody of us. <laughs> <laughs> ah, God, in the soup, man, amazing movie, one of my favorites. Kino. You know what I found funny? Yeah, so you know what, what I found funny? So you know how people their favorite movies on TikTok. It's all the Star Wars franchise and the Avengers franchise. Yeah. I did my favorite movies. <laughs> <laughs> it was like a joke. It was funny. 
Uh, which sounds kind of snobby and pretentious, but like the TikTok. Yeah, okay. No, the, I no, like I, I think we, I think on another PP episode we talked about how trash the TikTok world is in terms of film. Oh, we do. It's yeah. so, it's so, I mean, it's so junky. It's literally, mm-hmm. literally underrated cinema to them is still like fucking Joker and Taxi it's Driver. Prisoners. They always talk about fucking prisoners. Yeah, prisoners. Prisoners is cool, enemy. but I don't know. Mm. Watch so Mojo enemy. did like a top ten underrated movies of the 2010s, and number one was Prisoners. Never yeah, heard of it. When I watched that, even when I watched that video, it was like, like literally, like I think it was before. I think it was like 2010, 2015. So I watched the 2015, and they said Prisoners was number one. And even then, I'm like, that sounds wrong. Do you, like, that do you not remember any of the? Do you remember any of the other movies from that list? Mm, yeah. No, I was. Just, I just remember Prisoners was number one. Interesting. But yeah, this has been an interesting episode, in my opinion. Yeah, I, I definitely agree. Yeah, in my Keep opinion, me. no, it hasn't been. Yeah, well, fuck you. You can leave right now. Yeah, let's cut out all his parts, but still use his name <laughs> to get views. Yeah, Be we'll, like, we'll... oh, PB's going to talk eventually, and we'll just keep waiting and waiting and waiting, and nobody, he never shows up, and we get the full view and everything. You know how they recasted Kevin Spacey after he came out as a nonce? We'll do that with him, but it's Hulk Union. <laughs> <laughs> Hulk Union just talks over. He's like, what's up, bitches? It's popcorn philosophy. <laughs> you just well, record over my lines like a, like a wedding VCR. Like. Yeah, literally. Well, you both have a very similar sounding voice, so like it should be easy for him. Do we really? No. No. <laughs> one of you okay. sounds. One of you sounds like Jake Johnson, and the other one doesn't. So the other one sounds like talk. someone's girlfriend from when they were fourteen years old. One sounds like Jake Johnson. Fuck. So you got to guess which one's which. Yeah. I'm definitely Jake Johnson. You know what's funny, uh, Jason? Now that what? I've binge watched New Girl, he sounds nothing like Jake Johnson, but like, we, <laughs> but we still call him Jake. Johnson. We still call him Jake Johnson. Yeah, he sounds he sounds more like Matt Johnson from a uh, yeah that? yeah from uh, Badger Breaking from Breaking Bad. Yeah, yeah he, he like does. He does sound more like him. But like, we just love calling him Jake Johnson. I think it's just because whenever it was like when after the like a, you know Spider Verse type yeah, of thing. Exactly. And obviously, all our inside friends are Cape Shit shows. Yeah, so everybody gets whenever I say Badger, like I remember whenever I was watching Breaking Bad, and I was saying, "Oh yeah, Hulk Union's Badger," and I, nobody would ever like actually answer me and say like yes. And then now people are accepting it. Spread yeah. the Matt Jones's Hulk Union. Yeah. Speaking of fucking cape ship, uh, you guys are both huge comic book fans. What are the recent comic books you guys have been reading? Venom Lethal Protector. <laughs> what about you, Popcorn Philosophy? Um. Venom Lethal Protector. Pride Spider-Man and Blue. Wow, you've been reading Spider-Man Blue, PP. Is this to get a method for Spider-Man Lotus? <laughs> yeah, of course. We love Spider-Man Lotus. Yeah. Yeah. Kid with cancer, cry. Now, kid with <laughs> what? What? <laughs> it's because the plot is about Spider-Man meeting a kid who's dying of cancer. He's going to flash back about Gwen's death. Oh, okay. That's, yeah, that's we're interesting. Yeah, nerd. You don't know yeah. anything about Spider-Man Lotus. That, Spider-Man it, Lotus has an article from mycomicreport.com. It, wow. has, it has a lot a of low-budget Spider-Man film worth seeing. The movie hasn't even came out. How the hell is this worth seeing already? How much did it's they pay budget, for bro. That, you think? Yeah, right? How much did he... I think, I With think an Spider-Man estimated Lotus... budget of 25899 I thought he got up well, to 60000 It's 60 yeah. now. Yeah. Spider-Man He's Lotus has got a lot of articles, though. Search the internet. Just type in Spider-Man Lotus. You can just type in Spider Man. Never. I'm never going to Google that. If you type in I Harry Googled Osborne, it. It has it, on, it has an IMDb page. Yeah, yeah. Gavin made that, I think, though, isn't it? It's crazy. It's IMDb. It used to have a letterbox, but I think because of hate reviews, it got deleted. But yeah, Spider Man Lotus is worldwide, man. <laughs> First look at ha- Spider Man Lotus. Wow. If you type in Harry Osborn and go on the internet, I think uh, Sean White, the actor that's playing Harry Osborn and Spider Man Lotus, appears in images. Wait, when it, when it, has Spider Man Lotus even begun filming yet, or is that still not? Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah, it's finished filming. He's doing it. Oh, it's done? Oh, yeah, okay. He's, he's I'm excited. I'm excited too. We all love Spider-Man Lotus here. PP, do you like Spider-Man Lotus? I'm beyond thrilled to watch Spider-Man Lotus every day. You know how Adil has like the Fred countdown on his wall. <laughs> you have, have the Spider-Man, Spider-Man Lotus, Lotus countdown on my wall. You, you know what's funny? Someone can't actually do that. Though. Time out, and so I just what? That's an actual thing, though. What do you mean? <laughs> like someone can't probably do that shit. Like a Spider-Man Lotus That's... countdown wall, they probably do that. I think I think there's a comps dedicated to that problem. Remember whenever Film Bro Joe did the Venom? <laughs> yeah! Count- he, did, he was doing that for so long, and they just never released it for him. <laughs> oh, do you know about this, people? Do you know who Film Bro Joe is? No. 
He's a small ah, okay. shit post to such meme account. And he did this thing called the Venom Countdown. He did it. For, he it, it was two years in the making. Yeah, I think he did that before COVID even started. He, he did it before like COVID because he got like two delays during it. Three delays, maybe. And he kept every time he, it was getting down to like 30 days or so. And he was he'd getting excited. Yeah. yeah, he'd have to add it up like 150 more days. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah that was one part. It, got to, it got to 60 days and then that's the good delay. And it got to 120 days. <laughs> then when it got to like 30 days, it got delayed again for two weeks or some shit. He'd move it to 60 or 50. And then it got re undelayed. So he had to move it down to 40 or 30 again. Yeah, on his post, he says, uh, April 23rd, 2020. Oh, okay. It was the day when I started counting down to this movie. At the time, it was 428 days till the release of Venom, <laughs> Let There Be Carnage. The total number of days between now and then was 526. There were delays. <laughs> it was pushed up, but now we're here. <laughs> Dude, like, um, I, yeah. I, I mean, there's no way he he's didn't. Br- he's British. Imagine yeah, doing that, though, and then giving it, like, two stars. And, and then being stars. like, yeah, I didn't like it at all. It wasn't worth yeah, it. Yeah, it was okay. Uh, yeah. Uh, to be honest, I was gonna make a joke, being like, "No, nah, he memes. He'll like it." But he, first of all, he's British. He has to wait till October fifteenth. But second, oh, no, he has. To... Oh, yeah, that's right. Yeah, that was just Boom. the American one. And also, second, he he's actually really serious in his letterbox when it comes to reviews and shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah I, he follows me. I follow him. Like, I'll look at it. Like, I'm like, oh, I expect a shit post review. I click on it. It's like five paragraphs long. I'm like, wow, it's actually really thoughtful. Like, what yeah, the hell? he actually phone bro Joe. Yeah, <laughs> yeah film, more like phone bro Joe instead of shit. He's not a shit post on that box. He actually gives his actual current thoughts and shit. It's pretty cool. He also doesn't do that thing that certain meme accounts that we know people used to do where they act like they're in that character and get really annoying in DMs. Now he'll be honest with you and shit in comments and shit if you're talking about something serious. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. He's a legend. Film yeah, Film yeah. a legend, yeah. Yeah, we, we, I don't know if he watches this podcast, probably doesn't, but... He's watched he it is, he, is, he is one of my favorite accounts, to say the least. He's That's one of my favorite sure. accounts as well, and he's invited on here, and I prob- I think I've told him before, but like, his time zone's in it, I need, a, I need a schedule around him. Yes, meeting the film bro, Joe. That's one of the reasons we, you know, we got a lot of guests that want to be on here. And one, I don't really want them on here, so I'll be quiet. Or two, we got a long list and like time zones, so like it's really hard yeah. to put in. I got popcorn like... philosophy guy. My God, if he would stop begging to be <laughs> <Yeah>. on. <laughs> what were you gonna say? Here's the thing: I feel like everyone wants to be on the podcast, but yeah. not they people aren't really talking. interesting. And then yeah. even when they get on, like they don't like know how like podcasts work because they've never listened to a podcast in their life. Yeah. Only reason I know that is because I literally started a podcast with someone without ever listening to a podcast in my life. Casper Noir mustache. Yeah. So look, I don't know. I think people a lot of people want to be on podcasts, but I don't think a lot of them would actually be good on podcasts. Yeah, I agree, bro. There was this guy who began with he rhymes with Ashop. He was on our podcast like three times, I think, Jason. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> oh, gross. Yeah, uh, <laughs> and the thing is, like, he was on the gorilla once, right? Uh, yeah, and he was so awful that our review started spiking down, and he was just was really awkward that whole episode. He he fucking it was a really awkward episode that grill episode. Yeah, it, it, like it was like I don't know. Whenever it was just us, you know, me, you, and Hulk talking, it was fine. But once he kind of came in, it was it just it just went downhill after that. He also didn't get our whole gimmick joke about us watching Old Boy twenty thirteen instead of the actual Old Boy <laughs> yeah. accident. I was joking about that. He didn't get that. He didn't go with the flow, and that was awkward as well. And I had to end yeah, the joke uh... really fast. Because again, like people like that want to join your podcast, they won't listen to your podcast, and they don't, they won't know you guys really well. And Here's so the they thing. won't like. He listened to every single episode. That's the funny thing. Yeah, yeah he oh, was like our number God. one fan. He would comment. He would, he would always like ask yeah, us to be he on. Record, like you know. And don't you That's remember awkward. we used to we mentioned him as an ongoing joke? Afterwards. Yeah, he was like he was like our ongoing joke every episode, and then because yeah. of how bad that performance was, and then we got him on again, and it was awful again. He killed. He killed both the gorilla and the second film tie, or the the first film, the, the early the film tie run. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I remember, like, when we were trying to figure out guests, Gaspar brought up his name, and I was like, "That's never going to happen." <laughs> it's ironic because him and Gaspar became best of friends, and something happened between them. The end. Yes, they love they love love exposure well, that, so much. This, this is when this is when they, I mean Gaspar mentioned both. Max and Ash Hat as like potential guests, and I go like, "Fuck no!" Like, <laughs> we learned I wonder. The hard way I wonder if they like if they're ever just like, "Ooh, new film tirade episode." Like, I wonder if they ever uh, if they if they've listened to anything recently, and they're just like, hmm, "Why are they talking about us again?" Yeah, I don't know. It's fun. It's the good old days. <laughs> yeah, it was, I miss those days. Here's the thing: um, someone must disliked PP's episode last time. 
Yeah, I remember that. I yeah, that, that was right. Those, I remember. Yeah. We got so many views out of it, but th- we he would like twenty something dislikes randomly. Yeah, and this is the thing. Uh, PP thought it was bots, or we thought it was like a coincidence, right? It wasn't because the rest of our episodes get decent like dislike ratio. Yeah, we never we never have dislike problems like that yeah. ever. And then that one episode was just randomly disliked. <laughs> it was so weird, and I and I honestly think it was like a thing between Max and Arsat and shit. <laughs> oh, and also yeah, his probably. friends. Arsat's friends tried review bombing with Oh, yeah, I remember that. I well, remember that, with, yeah. Wow. Asshat, like, sucked my dick almost. Like, every post, every all my DMs. Well, he was like, a pee pee Yeah, really? and then, like, I guess when he found out that I didn't like him, or when I unfollowed him, that's when I think he got awkward. He got emo face, yeah. yeah. He still wanted to suck your cock, though. It was only when he started doing really offensive shit that he was like, oh, maybe that's why you hated me. No, dude. <laughs> oh yeah and now i know why people unfollowed me and it's like nope that's not why <laughs> yeah and i'll start with max if you're listening to this uh, comment down below <laughs> <laughs> comment pp sucks down below yeah just like the video get your shitty friend who tried review women with this and then delete this review after i confronted you to comment and uh you also comment uh be like hi guys what's up haha we miss you kiss kiss boom done bitches damn i'm looking back at some of our old episodes i miss whenever we used to get like a hundred and something views what the hell are you upset no i'm just looking at looking at all our views our views are back in the day and i'm like god we're washed we're washed as hell what the hell bro bro we we've we've survived over like 300 podcasts bro yeah i know we we've made it about film paradox at least we went out with our best video Well, it's deleted we so nobody can watch it now. Get pwned. What? <laughs> it's deleted so nobody can watch it now. So get pwned. Oh yeah. Yeah. How the how the hell did you guys get so many so many views? Like that really didn't make sense. Big followers. Yeah. Because yeah, like I I tried watching a few of them, but ugh. They were kind of boring, in it. Yeah. Yeah, we didn't have chemistry really. I don't think. And me and PFC kind of did, but I don't know. I mean, you guys got to talk what once every fifteen minutes. <laughs> that too. Kinda, yeah. Do you, remember, do you remember my parody of film or power shit, Jason? Where yeah, I would, you did every person, single, every one. single imitation. <laughs> and it was so easy you know, to do because when I do my PP, I, I told, person, I, I, sorry, I, saying, I, I told you already, but I have a um a film board parachute sticker yeah, on my sticker, computer. Yeah. You still have the film board parachute sticker? Yeah, I from have, Redbubble, I, who I, stole I, who stole the money away? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and I go to classes, <laughs> and people ask me like, "Oh, what's that?" I'm like, "Oh, what's." It's a long story. I don't really know. <laughs> explain to them. Explain to your whole class the film board parachute. You should. Yeah, you the should whole, honestly. The whole lore. You, you should just send them a link to the film tirade or something instead, and they'll understand because we mention it every episode. And let me get views off of it. Yeah, that too. You should. You should link. This How the hell did our Midnight that? Sky episode get over three hundred views? Because peepees in it. Oh, that's right. That's right. I forgot. That. <laughs> yeah, don't forget my star power. People. Love I think that was the one where you randomly showed up, like. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you new oh, host. Yeah. yeah, yeah. That was the one where I was like, we should make a clickbait title. No, that and was we... the Wonder Woman one. That was the Wonder Woman one. He was on Sound of Metal episode. Oh, that's said. right. That's right. Yeah. Well, Which bro, one you know... was the one that got the most views? Was it Wonder uh, Woman or Midnight Sky? Midnight Sky and Midnight Sky. Sound of Metal. Bro, our first episode oh, okay. was so good for just me and Jason. Yeah, it was 171 views. We talked about Chicago Man. Seven, Mank, and Oscar Bait. <laughs> yeah, that was such a good episode bro i think our episodes now are better they're more natural and more funny for yeah i know I, I definitely have you know i like i mean even though i like all making all of them i do it i don't know i feel like i do enjoy these new ones even though we're not getting views for some reason yeah i think 41 and 40 in four is uh, impressive for us yeah and we also have to think about the fact that you know we're splitting over two two different like it's not just only is... youtube it's like two different uh or spotify as well yeah you know they I don't know how many views we're getting off of the Spotify, but you know it right, probably takes a little bit. Because if we get ten to twenty, then that's like sixteen total from YouTube and yeah. Spotify. Last episode, yeah, yeah, seventy, eighty. If we got ten more on that, ten more on here, that'd be like hundred to end it in like thirty plays on Spotify and sixty on this in it. Now be- here's the one the PP got completely disliked on. Yeah, we have twenty four likes and twenty two dislikes. Good episode as well. <laughs> yeah, three hundred thirty <laughs> views. That was good. Five months ago. Oh wow! Yeah. yeah. We took a little break. April twelfth, twenty twenty one. I guess it was a month after the whole incident happened. Was it? Yeah. Was that, it twenty twenty one or was it? It was twenty twenty one. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, oh god, I, that that's been so long ago. I, it was. I yeah, barely remember. Like, it's just been a long year. You know, it's funny that he was talking about his film but parachute sticker because I'm wearing a film tire t shirt right now. <laughs> <laughs> Wonder if Joaquin still has his film tirade mug. He does. He'll send a picture of me after this episode. Fuck you. <laughs> send us a picture after this episode. You you might 
enter a free raffle giveaway. Yeah, <laughs> we might still watch <laughs> until Transylvania <laughs> with us. Yo, yo, Pee Pee, are you, you got your phone out? Oh, you're using it for this, aren't you? Jason, get your phone out. Oh, no, yo, he's a holic. Fuck. I was going to say, we one of us should get our phone out. I'm using my phone as well. And um, we should have done like a thing like, Enter this raffle and you can watch Hotel Transfer with me, Weasel Holly, and I'm going to lose you. It's tired of so. <laughs> Oh, God. That's amazing. Uh, that's my favorite story of all time, PP. Thank you for telling me that story. You're welcome. It was like yeah, PP, that was in the, the back of my head. That's <laughs> something that I'm going to tell my grandkids about the time PP told me a story of watching a movie with a librarian. Well, it's going to be the yeah. TV clip. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, we were talking about film tirade. Uh, I've worn this shirt out in public like three times as well. So people have seen it and been like, what's that? And I said, tirade in it. <laughs> I just tirade, I haven't explained it. I just said that because it's the word on the shirt. You've seen it, the red shirt. Yeah, <laughs> didn't Gavin buy a shirt as well? Yeah, he bought the same shirt as me. Oh, cool. It's a cool shirt. I was thinking of making more, you know, but I want to make an actual merch site. instead of just Not like, Red Bubble. Not Red Bubble. Yeah. yeah. Red yeah. Steal Our Money Bubble. Yeah. But what else did I say? Oh, yeah, the reason I mentioned me wearing my shirt in public is because... Hulk Union, we can't name this person. Hulk Union lives near this person who is a niche internet <laughs> celebrity and they wear their merch out in public all the time. I don't know why, but that made me laugh. Oh, wait. Jason, Jason, do you know who I'm on about? Yeah, I think so, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, the person that Hulk, Hulk lives next to. Yeah, yeah, Hulk lives near him, yeah. PP, do you want to think, think about do, it? Do I know? Uh, uh, I, think, I think you told me before. Uh huh, uh huh. I don't know how to public, like. And I, I don't know how to say anything else. Yeah, uh, you, I just find that so funny. I have a, a, a not a history with them, but I like, talked about them with you before, right? Yeah, yeah. Okay, I know, I know. What it is. They stole Jason's meme once. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> back in the back in the day, <laughs> in yeah, 2019. Yeah, so long ago. Bro, two, 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 three, two, three. I've been your friend for how long? Has it been like what? Like birds I think it was prayer. January of or no, so at February of 2020. It was Birds of Prey, yeah. Yeah, I remember so, like, we connected over like Birds of Prey. What? Did I didn't? I weren't we friends like end of January? Me and you were friends like before me and Jason were good friends, but me and Jason you have known each other since 2019. Uh, I, I'll take the dub, yeah. You, you take, yeah, you I, I've known I've known since uh Ben Parker reboot. That's uh, <laughs> yeah, the good old day. J- Jason's known me since I was in the community because AP introduced me to him in a group chat and uh, yeah. I also defended Jason twice as a Spider Man account. Back in the good old days. We also <laughs> reminisced about watching Jay and Silent Bob in the comment section of his when he was a Spider-Man meme account. Yeah. <laughs> you remember that? That was when Jay and Silent Bob reboot was coming out. Yeah. Yeah. That was uh, the good old days. Clark's 3, watch soon. That's insane. Oh, God, we were so cringy back then as well. We would make shitty jokes about cape shit, PP. Like, like we think the Russo brothers were the biggest directors or some shit. We make jokes about that. Yeah, back in the... You guys back in used the... to be cringe? Used to be. I'm sorry. All right, Hulk, Hulk, come on! You're recording your yeah. lives now. Come on, no. hurry up! Good <laughs> evening. Yeah. Kick this librarian out of this stage. <laughs> nah. New film tired much coming soon on the Pokemon Philosophy IG TV page. Which TV page? I mean yeah. IG t- IG page. Oops. <laughs> Bro, 141 minutes. How long is that? Two hours twenty. Two hours. Yeah, two hours twenty one minutes thirty five seconds. Oh. Oh yeah, I, I have the exa- I have the exact runtime on here. Okay, oh, that's amazing. I think this is a good time to end it, right? Yeah, I think yeah. we 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 time. Mean, unless there's anything else you want to say, PP, any other closing well, remarks? I'm, I mean, there's still so much information we didn't cover. Like what? I'm joking. I'm any joking. other repressed <laughs> memories <laughs> about librarians? Cool therapy session. Yeah, therapy. Um, I used to read the Hardy Boys books when I was in like I the Hardy school. Boys. Do you remember the Hardy yeah, Boys? Yeah, like Nancy Drew, but for boys, two kids. Yeah. And the, the Hardy Boys, not down. the wrestling duo. Yeah, I know that's what I'm thinking of right now. But I was pretty sure that wasn't it though. When I was no, a kid, no. when I was a kid, I was so fucking stupid that if something had the name of something I've already watched from something else, I would think it was the same thing. <laughs> like, like I thought the Hardy Boys. When my mom mentioned the Hardy Boys, the books, I was thinking she was on about the wrestlers having their own. <laughs> yeah, Jeff and what what those. Jeff and Matt Ma- Hardy. Yeah, and I thought those were them oh, when yeah. they were younger. <laughs> but it turned out it wasn't. It was just a book about two kid detectives. The same way I would think a reboot was not a reboot, and it was the same thing. Like Famous Five. I don't know if you guys remember those. Those detective books. They had a TV show on Disney Channel, which was shit. And I thought it was the same exact characters because it was a reboot. <laughs> or like I, when I was a kid, I didn't think Jessica Alba was in Spy Kids 4D. And my mum was telling me she is, she is, she is. And the only reason I said no is because her hair was blonde in Fantastic Four. 
<laughs> you guys have any memories like that? What were you going to say about the Hardy Boys PP? Um, oh, yeah. I would, like, read them constantly. Yeah. And the librarian took notice of that. Oh, my God. <laughs> I want to show you in the librarian. <laughs> no. She would just be like, hey, you should slow down. Those are, like, those are graphic <laughs> books. And I'm like, what? And so what she would start doing, she, like, knew, like, because I would, I would read them chronologically. Like, they weren't, like, chronological, but, like, I would read them, like, when they were released. Mm-hmm. So she started, like, hiding them, not hiding them, but holding them. And, like, she was like, you need, you need to take a break. And so she would hold them for, like, a week at a time. I like, can she like, withhold you, you from this? taking out a book? I'm like, what are you? She's like, yeah, you need, you need like a week break. And so she would just take the, the Hardy Boy book off the shelf that I was on. And I'm like, what are you? Why? Like, I would have just, just like, taken the next one and gone with it. Why not? I don't know. I think I like read something else. But yeah, it was like she did that like a few times. I'm like, what are you trying to do right now? Like, is it bad for me to read? Isn't that like your whole? Yeah, isn't it? Yeah, her whole, whole persona should be kids making read. kids to read. Yeah. Like, Quite literally taking the book from me and hiding it behind the counter so I can't read it. <laughs> She's like, we could watch more movies though if you're interested. <laughs> yeah. Baby, was this the same grade? Yeah, was this like when you were younger? younger? Was this the same grade or when you were younger? This was, I think, this was before the Hotel Transylvania incident. <laughs> so this did you before do Transylvania that? Gate. Do you think you did the Hotel Transylvania thing as like revenge or some shit? <laughs> No, I, I just thought, ooh, movie with, with someone. I don't have to go to class. I didn't put much thought into it. I think but you and maybe... the teacher have, like, a history that you didn't know, and maybe you, you were doing the Tony Soprano, but you have hidden, like, thoughts, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. To revenge. Yeah, yeah, yeah. love story with this woman? No, yes. I love story. I mean, like, you want to, you are revenge against her, and that's why you did the whole trust of anything. That's what you remember. By watching a movie with her? By, by like, <laughs> an hour and a half. Break. By stop yeah. reading yeah. the Hardy Boys. <laughs> You did tell us you just stared at the screen and I said you didn't laugh or anything. <laughs> I didn't do that on purpose. I thought it would be funny. <laughs> did, did she laugh at the did she laugh at the jokes or no? No, it was quiet. The whole room was quiet. It was like an hour and a half Even of your silence friends. while the movie was on. Even your friends. <laughs> yeah, my friends did not vibe with it either. We were all kind of in agreement that it was mid. You guys were like eleven. 10? Were, uh, I think eleven, yeah. And like we again, like I brought candy. For my friends, but it ended up being kind of just shared with the librarian as well. <laughs> Aw, it's so sweet, bro. This is this is an interesting story, bro. I think I, I honestly think you guys were really. Did you did you watch Fantastic F- F- Mr. Fox Mr. Fox as a kid? Uh, no, I watched it actually like a year ago. I oh. watched it as a kid. I remember seeing it in theaters. Did you hate it as a kid. I remember I liked it, but I was just very, con- I just was really confused. Like, I never okay. really watched, like, a stop, well, besides a nightmare, um, or the nightmare before Christmas. So I was like, what the hell's going on? Okay. Cause, okay, you got past him, Jason. Cause I believe if you, wa- if you watch Fantastic Mr. Fox as a kid in the theater on DVD the day it came out and you enjoyed that movie and thought it was witty and smart and funny, I thought you were a cunt as a kid or a sociopath. <laughs> I just like I just like the animals running and shit. That's all I care oh, about. Yeah, I really did. I didn't think it was anything confused. else. Because you were confused, <laughs> yeah. If you were not confused by that movie, you were a cunt. And I feel like Peepy and his friends were like that because they did not like Hotel Transylvania at the age of yeah. 11 years old. Yeah, boo. Yeah. Boo. You know, actually, speaking about theater experiences, I remember seeing Spy Kids 4D and just oh, how girl, sick, I just bro. doing the scratch and sniff. I was so oh, excited. Yes. <laughs> Peepy, did you ever watch 4D Spy Kids? That's a no, isn't it? Yeah, get out of here. Get yeah. out of here. I think his, his, his thing has done that thing where it's muted again. Yeah, I feel like it might have been. But it's cool because uh, I think this going to be the last point we make in it and then we'll end it because this is a yeah. fucking long ass episode. With Spy Kids 4D. This is turning into a, a freaking film bore parachute episode. It is, but at least we're actually discussing good shit that people like. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but yeah, the scratch and sniff thing was so revolutionary. Do you remember being disappointed because you thought it was something bigger? Yeah, I thought I thought it was. That's exactly how I felt. I thought it was going to be something so huge and it sucked. It was so bad. <laughs> I was like, you have to scratch it, and then it's like I... at certain moments a number would appear on the screen. And you had to scratch the number, and sn- and this it didn't even smell right. It didn't. It was proper shit. And like when I was and Joel like, McHale's in the movie. He is. He plays like the husband of Je- Je- Jessica Alba, doesn't he? Yeah, I think so. Yeah. And uh, when you and uh, when you watch this movie, right? Our oh, PP's back. What's up, PP? I think he's muted again. Doesn't matter since we're ending the episode soon. But like. 
I remember when it came out, Spy Kids 4D and shit. Do you remember all the adults around you, all the kids around you? I think it's going to be revolutionary and people can watch 4D movies in 2021 and shit. Yeah, I remember 4D was seen as like so crazy, especially after 3D and Avatar. But it's like, oh my God. And then it sucked. And then I've, I've not seen a single 4D movie since that, since Spy Kids 4D. Yeah, literally, Spy Kids 4D is the last 4D movie I've seen. And what, they got 5D, they got 6D. Nobody watches those shit stuff. So. Unless you go to a museum. <laughs> literally, even 3D is so washed now. Who the hell actually watches 3D? Yeah, the only movies, the only times I watched movies in 3D in the last five years is because um, they fucking they didn't have like they, you they didn't have the tickets for the 2D showing. Yeah, the last movie I watched in 3D was uh, was um, the first Ant Man, but for Ant Man and the Wasp, mm-hmm. I went for the 3D showing, and then the fucking glasses or they didn't have the thing working, so the glasses weren't working, so it was all out of focus and blurry the entire movie, and then um. And then they were had they to stop and birth? rewind the whole thing. Yeah, they were giving birth. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the last movie I watched in 3D was uh, either... It was Doctor Strange. That was the last one I remember. And then it was Mission Impossible Fallout. That was the last one. And the only reason we watched Mission Impossible Fallout in 3D was because... Um, what do you call it? They couldn't get the 2D showing. It was the last showing. Like, uh, I don't know. 3D is so washed now. I remember watching Avatar in 3D. I think everybody saw Avatar in theaters. I don't think there's a way you ha- you didn't. Avatar like literally so everybody enough. yeah i can't i've never rewatched it i never want to i didn't even really care for it as a kid yeah. but i never you know i don't know it just as watching that in 3d was like an experience pp thoughts on 3d um i don't know i feel like there's been a lot of novelties that have kind of come into film and then died out like like 4d well it sounds cool cinema scope <laughs> was cool they had smell yeah 4d um, yeah 4d yeah, it's PP's an old man. Well, that's why he doesn't remember. Yeah, that. he <laughs> uses he uses different. those old ass terms. <laughs> I re- I wrote about this in class. Yeah, in the nineties. <laughs> <laughs> that wasn't funny. That was hurtful. I wasn't even born in the nineties. FYI. Yeah, you wouldn't be born in the nine if you went to school in the nineties. You'd be born in like the seventies, the eighties, not the nineties. Yeah, the eighties. <laughs> when were you born? I can leave again. I can leave. Okay. We'll just go back to talking about spy kids and sex tuplets. So yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I want to watch that body <laughs> Sex tuplets is the only movie I'll watch. Marlon Wayne's bald sack running. <laughs> I'm gonna talk about the Maltese Falcon. What do you say, buddy? I'm gonna talk about the Maltese Falcon if you keep making fun of me. Okay, I won't I apologize, sir. Would you wanna yeah. watch Spider Man Lotus in 4D PP or smell of yeah. I would watch Spider Man Lotus in zero D. Oh, is wow. that burn? So you're burn. not gonna, it's, yeah, because you're gonna implant it directly to your mind and remember every I'm aspect. Of the zero it dimension, the zeroth I, dimension. I can't wait for the episode we do with GJ Kig, uh, P, uh, Jason. Yeah, because um, I'm gonna, I'm gonna be like, what's your thoughts on popcorn philosophy? He's gonna be like, who? Yeah, I've never even heard yeah, of that. Who the fuck is that guy? Yeah, yeah, and um, we're gonna get PP on that episode as well, and they can just debate. <laughs> yeah, they, they can debate. We'll, we'll, we'll just set them up. We'll be like, PP, you, you've said some hateful comments towards GJK, <laughs> and then just sit back. <laughs> yeah, like, oh, and then wow. people will be like, well, I mean, the kid's dying of cancer, and Gavin's like, yes, it's deep. Yeah, and why does Spider-Man have to tell him about his girlfriend tragically dying when the kid's dying in front of him? Because it's deep. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. Uh, yeah. It's an interesting plot, but we are excited, aren't we? Yes, we love it. We love it. Spend a little watch it. Yeah, PP, we were also talking before, like, you left and joined, left and joined, left and joined, about um, 4D and how everybody thought it was going to be, like, this epic thing, and then it just kind of died straight away. Yeah. PP, did you watch Spy Kids 4D? You didn't get to answer the question. Oh, yeah. So I was saying, like, which, I don't remember, I remember I saw the Water Park one. Was what? that 3? That's 3? Like, yeah. It was a video game. Yeah, yeah, that's 3. Yeah, it's 3D. 3D. That's, That's 3D. Spike is 3D. Which one is 4D? The is next one, one with Joel McHale. He has, he has Ricky wow. Gervais as a dog. I no, I don't think I did. <laughs> he, has, he has pregnant Jessica Alba doing karate, and he has uh, lots of fun service lines from the original. Yeah, Jessica Alba. Like, whatever happened to her? Just oh, she old. stopped being casting. Yeah. I think yeah, people I realized why? she was a bad actor. Yeah, like, why did she stop being casting? <laughs> like, that's like, the fucking point. <laughs> I, think, I think people realized she was a bad actor. <laughs> I mean, if you think about it, like, a lot of her earlier work really does come straight from Robert Rodriguez, and he kind of, like, started spacing out his movies as he got, you know, in, within the last 10 years. So 
he just hasn't had to cast her. And when, then, I mean, he was the only one casting her outside of Fantastic Four. That's so. another thing. She was in a lot of blockbusters in the 2000s. It's just Robert Rodriguez kind of started a career. And therefore, I don't think she kind of got implemented in 2010s properly. And she was also in that movie Good Luck Chuck with Dane Cook. And if you're in a Dane uh, Cook movie, you immediately, your credit and like, I don't know, my yeah. respect for anybody who works with Dane Cook is zero. Now, Jessica Alba is just an actress that mothers know. Yeah, yeah, that's it. Like, maybe she'll, like, pop up in a rom-com or something like that that mothers will like, but that's it. Yeah, that's it. It's interesting. It's interesting how you could be an actor and so one day you could be in the biggest blockbusters in the world and the next day you just become an actor that Karen's know. <laughs> Sad world. It's like, it's like, what's Instagram accounts, isn't it? PP old buddy. Yeah, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> one day all the, all the Karens are going to be like, remember that popcorn philosophy guy? <laughs> I remember his so podcast, the film Tyrade, and it was called something dumber than that. <laughs> <laughs> called 2.5 Cinephiles. And everybody would be like, oh, he peaked whenever he posted those memes. His actual posts are so terrible. Oh my god. <laughs> I'm kidding, Popcorn Philosophy. Your actual posts are really good. Your really? memes are also good too, but I like he's, the real posts. He's like my favorite film account. I don't really yeah. care about any other film account. Film accounts boring. Yeah. Except for Adult Does Movies, Popcorn Philosophy, and Film Bro Joe. Yeah. Those are the three <laughs> exceptions. Oh, Brody. Oh, and Brody's Keno account. But his yeah. posts don't ever really appear on my timeline for some reason. Yeah. Feed, yeah. I don't know why. I, his stories crazy. always do, but his posts never do. I've always found this weird. Brody gets so much likes, but he doesn't get any followers. Like, he has this, he, like, he gets followers like I do, but like his posts get lots of likes recently. Yeah, he get, he, his last post has over a thousand likes in a day, and he's still... When I used to, to Yeah, when I used to post daily and get likes, I used to get followers. He just seems to not have that effect. Because like... Me and him usually hit the same milestones, but he's been getting these likes recently. It's really weird. He hasn't been getting followers. Probably because Insta hates him. Truth. Yeah. And uh, yeah, I think that's how we're going to end the episode. It was an honor having you, Popcorn Philosophy. Yes, Popcorn Philosophy. Thank you for informing us of all your different uh, film taste. You're yeah, welcome and, uh... for getting shat on. <laughs> Thank, Thank you, you for telling stories. us librarian. Yeah, multiple yeah. librarian stories. Yeah, multiple librarian Thank stories. you, welcome. And uh, yeah, thank you, Jason, for being here as well. Of course, of course. Anytime. But remember to listen to Stepdad by Eminem, everyone. Yes, of course, I will. And uh, yeah, peace. Goodbye. Oh my god. Oh my god. Bro, it was so hard to like uh okay, I can do it on phone, but audio is shit. Okay, let's let's find out. His audio's gonna be shit, isn't it? <laughs> Let me, let me put my headphones on. Yo, pee-pee. <coughs> yeah. <laughs> talk to Sis and Sis. I'm talking. Oh. It's, it's not bad. Sense. Is it not bad? No, it sounds pretty fine. No, it, it's pretty fine. Okay, Um, let me just uh, turn my box leave my PC on. I'm going to turn off the show in the background, and then I just sit on my bed now. So This will be the end credits for this episode, by the way. What will be the end credits? This this whole thing, this whole situation. Fuck. Um. Okay. Because we've been we've been in a call for three minutes. What? <laughs> Waiting for you. I was yeah. like, well, you guys were like waiting for me to finish eating. I'm like, we can talk while I eat, like prep or whatever. Like, you don't have to just sit here. No. And, like... No. Nobody wants to hear PPA ASMR. Okay. Well, fine. I you don't was... get to hear my ASMR. I, I think it was Joaquin that mentioned this, but like. You know, whenever someone eats on a podcast, you can like proper noise it and it makes you want to crease. Like, it makes you want to. It, it feels like. Yeah, it is, someone... It's not good. It's not. I remember Gaspar. Yeah. He ate like. <laughs> yeah. That's, that's what it was. <laughs> or something. And it was like really. It was not. It was a little annoying. Then again, Gaspar's the same guy that went to take a piss with his laptop and shit and then found out <laughs> the audio was probably so like... <laughs> Yeah, I remember that. Yeah. <laughs> like, you could just like said like wait anyways it's it's whatever you know what this will be the start what do you guys do you guys want this to be the end credits the start of the podcast do you, do you guys mind if i go take a shit right now don't worry i'll keep the phone on so you can... <laughs> <laughs> i need to hear yeah 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 some more pp shit yeah, some more. your name is poop on philosophy for yeah and and i'm pp pp uh, when are we make, when, when are you making pp nft uh what's nft wait are you being serious yeah, I don't know what NFT is. It's like so. Oh, okay, so so they call non fungible tokens. But basically, what they are is, it's it's a picture. It's a JPEG that people pay millions and millions of dollars for. 
You've never heard of it? Really? You've never heard of an NFT? I feel like those are pretty popular. Um, yeah, I guess I haven't. You're probably wondering, why would someone pay for an image? Why would someone pay $500,000 for an when image? When you could just download it onto your phone for free. Or you could just screenshot. We do not know, but people do it. It's a pump and dump scheme, but like it's it's become very mainstream, and there's actual people that lie and say they're in it for the art form and shit. Like, what... What pictures are they are they getting? Like, like quite any, literally anything. Anything. A Hulk Union meme, a Pokemon Philosophy profile picture. Yeah, yeah. Like, use the use the popcorn head on the Adam Sandler body and so you know sell it. What, what would stop like someone from just screenshotting and sending it to everyone? Nothing. Nothing. There's. It's not like it's like a hidden image. I mean, usually most of the time it's like a picture of somebody that you could just find off the internet. Yeah. Hmm. You can you can literally take a picture uh, of a uh, Quentin Tarantino screenshot that. Put it up as an NFT, and someone will buy it, and you won't get sued for it. Apparently. Well, I'm gonna start doing that. Holy shit! I'm gonna make some money then. <laughs> I like how we just introduced NFT to PP. Yeah, yeah. PP's learning the world. I'm gonna take yeah, some, some pictures of minions. I'm gonna start yeah. minion pictures. <laughs> some minions in sexy poses. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all the all the fifty year old grandmas who use Facebook will. Uh, the Facebook memes the will be going through the roof. Yeah, you, you reinvent <laughs> Facebook through NFTs. You become richer than Zuckerberg. <laughs> Alright, guys. You know, you know, if Insta crashes one more time, then maybe we should just move on to NFTs and Bitcoin and shit. Shitcoin, Howie coin. Howie coin. Wow. Yeah. Yeah, because how has Insta was Insta dodgy for you today, PP? Today, um, I don't really know for sure. I was kind of at work for a big portion of it, but when I was on it, it wasn't too bad. Yeah, for for me it was I don't know if it was for you, Jason, but like images. Had a few refreshing and, issues, like refreshing, it just wasn't refreshing properly. Yeah. And shit, yeah, and stories, it was dodgy. I know, like the day that it was completely off, there was like Twitter feeds that were like, "Oh my god, look at Facebook's code! It's just been deleted. Facebook's been deleted." <laughs> no, it's so fucking stupid. They're like, the, it's not like what the fuck, and it's like some like random picture of like code, and there's just like a space, like like a line missing. Yeah, and I'm like, what? Oh. Who's doing? Who's saying this shit? Like, what are you talking about? Yeah, they have servers for a fucking reason, bozo. Anyways, I think this is a perfect time to start the podcast. I think I am gonna make this end credits. I think it's more funny when it's end credits, right? Make um, it the end credits. Consume. Yeah. Consume. Even though we're gonna get two views this episode, actually no, five million because we got PP. Yeah, episode. we have PP on, so his his follower simp base will give us a million views. Mm-hmm. Hello and welcome to the film tirade. I'm your host, Popcorn Philosophy. With me is my co-hosts. Introduce yourselves. Sir. Hi, I'm Popcorn Philosophy. And also with me is <laughs> What Popcorn Philosophy? Popcorn Philosophy, are you here? <laughs> you think Anchor stopped working for him again? Poop corn. Oh my god, he's a fraud. Are you muted? Yeah. You realize you're we cannot hear a single thing you're saying right now. <laughs> Is he going to take a piss for real? He's watching a movie, he has to take a poop. Poop gone? Let's see let's see if he's active in Discord. Poop gone. Howie philosophy. Alright, Venom twenty eighteen irony Europe. Yeah, yeah. What is he doing? Who the hell Yo, is he, I shit my pants? Is that um, PP as well? It kicked me, yeah, it kicks me out. Oh my god, now we have two peepees. What the hell is happening with you and Anchor, man? Wait, really? Yeah. P- Poopcorn Pissosophy is still in here, and so is I shit my pants. Yeah, what if he starts me? talking? How trippy would that be? Yeah, no, that would be weird. Anyways, Alternate so, reality? Like, I was like, got a drink, I was like, looked over, and like my phone, like you know how like after like, it goes on standby, it like turns black? Yeah. yeah it just so connected. I went back to my phone and it was on like this. It was like, oh, but you're still connected. And so I went on and then like the clock was still going, but no one was responding to me. And I didn't hear anyone talking. Do you have an iPhone or Android? I do have an iPhone. That's weird. I have an iPhone. It never goes on the black screen when I'm on Anchor. That's interesting. Well, Treats like a call. Oh, well. I think, well, I think, yeah, I don't know. I'm, just, I'm, yeah, I'm I... okay. I, I'm, I mentally am ready now. I'll just keep using my thumb <laughs> to click it on. Yeah. Dedicated. We've had like we've had a million delays as well because yesterday I had to go take out some trash. 
And the we couldn't they're rooting them. against us, but but we're gonna they get hate us. Done. And then like two weeks after that, like PP forgot we were injured two weeks ago, one week ago as well. Oh so, like, yeah, yeah, like, yeah. Well, it's like three. Yeah, like, <laughs> we were like Monday sounds good, and then neither one of us said anything. And then like Wednesday, you're like, what are we supposed to talk on Monday? And I was like, oh yeah. <laughs> oh well, let's start the episode.